All right, hello everybody. This is uh, Aksu and three tiebreaker players talk, going to talk about like all of the corporation cards this time. We just what talk with the same people on Barham's Wu stream, Barham Wu stream Mond <laughs> on Monday. So if anybody wants more of the same action, go there and watch that stream also. So I'm here with Augustus. Do you want hey, to introduce me. yourself? And the previous I'm, stream had some spicy takes. One one very right take by me. So I'm, I'm feeling vindified. The crew take, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I really have. I, I don't think it. I was the only one saying that it was the best card in the set, but I, I don't know about the it. best card, but yeah, it's kind of up there. Uh, definitely best runner card, right? Yeah, know. best runner card, but there's some messed up corporation ones. Yeah, that's true. And I think we have Barum Wu, who is still in the game with pencil. I'm, no, no, no. I'm, I'm here. I'm <laughs> here. I'm, I'm, I'm fully. 100% uh, dedicated to the stream, uh, even yeah. though there's a chance <laughs> I could beat Pinsel in a game online. But that one, Baram, was just a, an imposter clone. That's not the real <laughs> That's Baram Twu, my uh, <laughs> my eternal my eternal namesake. Yep. So I think we're going to follow the same same formula as Mon as Monday. So I'll be checking out one card. This time we have sorted out the uh, tier listing like in order of the cards. So you can can kind of see what's coming up. This is what happens when the stream is set up by a professional. <laughs> <laughs> like, you get them cards in like number order from NRDB. I think you did extra work by going and naming all of those. Oh, I, I got them from the NSQ website. When oh they're, yeah, they're not in a consistent order, <laughs> and that's what. So I think the first card that we can start with is going to be Thunderbolt Armaments, which is whenever you raise a piece of AP or destroy ice during a run, that ice gets plus one strength and ends the run subroutine unless the runner trashes one of the their installed cards after the all, all of the other subroutines. Neither of you have like a hot take about this. Hmm. I, I have a pretty mild take that this is unplayable. Um, <laughs> a mild take, that's <laughs> <laughs> but the coldest take ever. <laughs> um, I yeah, this like mostly just doesn't have a home because there isn't any AP or destroyer ice that you want to de-res, which is all the support it got. So. It would be like it's way better to just take all the D-Res cards that you put into your deck and have an Asa ID ability or something better. Uh, it's mostly how it shakes out. Yeah, uh, I though, think I kind of have to agree with that take. Like, I just yeah. don't see any like real support for the card currently. And we'll talk about it more later. But also, unfortunately, all the D-Res stuff is really bad into our Osiris crew. So it's all of that is also unplayable. But it that certainly doesn't help us. Oh yeah. Getting also like meta def <laughs> method out. But you got some like junk idea for the deck at least. <laughs> don't, don't bother. No yeah. one has an agenda. <laughs> um, have I got a junk idea for the deck? Yes. I'm going to be. I, I, I still think this is like potentially good with Starvkas. Right? Mm -hmm. Um. I, whether it's like actually good, good, mm, maybe, maybe not, or whether it's just like, um, whether it's that's just fun. I have played one game against one of these decks so far, um, and. But I, I did get a little bit wrecked by them resing a bloop and I had to like crash my ASOPs, which was the only thing I had installed at that point so that I could get in. No. So but on that turn, the card text was relevant. Every other turn of the game, it was irrelevant <laughs> or it was basically irrelevant. 
It's um, kind of one credit tax at maximum at most point of the game. Yeah, I mean they they were doing some pretty funky stuff. They had I saw I think five different ice which cost ten. <laughs> like like they were playing like all the big ice, and I do mean all the big ice. Um, which was like pretty cool, like to see some of this ice, which you don't normally get to see. Um, so that was funky. Um, but competitively, you must agree with us that it's not kind of there. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not seeing. I, I think this is like a really fun deck, which I think lots of people are gonna have fun making their friends miserable <laughs> in, at like the weekly meetups and things like that i i don't think there's a competitive version i don't think there's a competitive deck there yet yeah maybe after some support so i think we're all agreeing that it's going in d tier right yep yeah Yeah. go on and stick it in there for now yeah we can always always of course move those but i don't see us moving that (laughs) at any point and so after that, one of the support pieces for the ID, it's Lighting Labo- Laboratory, a 4-2 agenda that gets an agenda counter on it when you score it. And that agenda counter raises you two eyes, protecting the attacked server with no cost, that, that, and you must de rest those eyes after the round ends. Like, uh, straight after Bao was talking about raising big eyes, I guess this does that, right? Yeah, I I didn't see this agenda in their deck, and I was very surprised not to. I saw a remote enforcement, which made a lot of sense. If you're if you're trying to get ten cost dice for free, like yeah, let's go. Um, this... I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out an Axu saying here: the ceiling of this is really <laughs> high, right? like <laughs> like. This, if yeah. if you've got a, a a remote which has got two big pieces of ice or something with an additional cost like an archer, and you've also got some cheaper things, because you don't have to de-res the same pieces of ice, right? Like this is the one which it's like you Ooh. can your big things, and then you could like de-res two tithes, and all of a sudden you've got a free archer and a free, you know, next Ooh. diamond or something. No, um, hear, me, hear me out. The ceiling is really, really high, because if you have exactly Anaconda and Hafron in the remote, you can get a guaranteed Anaconda fire. Uh, I think That's it's the when the run begins, and you have so you have to order them correctly. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you should, ideally you have a tithe also rest on that server already, so that you, so can you get to keep one. the Anaconda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you do all of that, you probably win the game. So. Yeah, problem is just uh, getting there. <laughs> that's definitely a thing you can do. So, so it is cut. one of it is one of the plays of all time, I believe. Is, uh, is yeah, correct so that's going to be a curse line that somebody is taking at some point. Mm. It's or just you going... can do the same with Sisenton. So I see Andrew popping on popping on chat. That's something Andrew would enjoy. Uh, some good old Sisenton half run action. Also, Metro- um, yeah, Johnny, Metropole Grid. Johnny's Andre. pointing out... Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Ah, hey, Andre. Uh, Johnny's pointing out the issue here, so it does all have to be on the same server. So this is why, although the ceiling is really, really high, the setup for getting there is, like, kind of nuts, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you have to put Hafrin into your remote and then score a 4-2 with a Hafrin uh, on your remote. So that's the easy part. Of this, right? You can have some extra ice there, right? You can rush behind Black Bran or something, or Pagan, maybe. Yeah. We're, we're assembling a 5 ice remote <laughs> just, for, just for this interaction. That's, and that's then your opponent amazing. just doesn't try to run it ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of like fun card, <laughs> and but like 4-2 agendas, agenda, not fun to score out if you're not like PD, and PD just doesn't fit this right. Yeah, yeah, we, we can just stop memeing and put yeah. it in D tier. <laughs> I think Bayou got the defense for this. No, it's fine. Yeah, D tier is not fine. 
It's it's fun, but not competitively viable at all. And more of a actually competitive card, Warm Reception, one cost political asset with a trash cost of two. When your turn begins, you may install one card from HQ, and you cannot score that card in this turn, like NSG ruining yet another combo card. If the server is not protected by ice, you may de-res this asset to de-res another card as well. No, August, you got a take? I did not know this had a second line of text. That's crazy. Um, but the first line of text is pretty good. Um, mm. I haven't played around with Asa much, and this is like a pr pretty sure only an Asa card. If you're putting this outside, outside of faction, you're almost rather wage workers. Mm, um, maybe if you're importing it, I guess it could be nice. Yeah. But even in Asa, I don't think this is an automatic thing because no, it like, kicks up your remote and is easy to trash and you won't always be guaranteed to have things to install. There's a lot of things keeping this card down, but the effect is pretty nice. Like, if if we had Mumbad level assets, this would be probably busted, but we don't. Yeah, like I played this ar around with this in Asa and you like actually run out of stuff to install with quite quickly. And the second line of text is also like a bit of a meme. You can get something with working prototype, but Yeah, I, I guess it like give, it lets you pay one to draw a card if you have a spin doctor out. That isn't irrelevant. But the problem is you're all icing this card every single time, right? So Yeah, you kinda of have to ice it. The trash cost of two is just too we like weak and easy to take out of. <coughs> yeah, I don't know. This is probably not a D card. We can put it in C tier. Yeah, this actually does to... something what? compared to these other two cards. And I think there actually might be a like competitive Asa deck, or you actually could import this to, to like near a hub or something. Ice it up once, and then you just get your free, free click, basically, and free draw for a turn. Yeah. Are you thinking of putting it higher than C tier, or...? Which... Like, I'm straight in the middle of B and C. If you think C and... I, I'd, I'd argue for C. It's it's tricky. It's like, it's got a lot of a lot of good words, which are, are words which are stuff that you want to do in, in purple, but I don't see it... I don't see it ever getting that, like, second thing and whether the second thing is any good... Like I just, it's it's like, it's a fine card that does something, but I don't know if it does something that's. Bad yeah, maybe if you had an Ace attack that draws more consistently and goes even more wide, that this could see play, but that's just yeah. not currently a reality. So C there is fine. Yeah. yeah. Like if we had a stone moon. Yeah, something like that. I'd be all for it. Yeah. Maybe Est there's Est Estelle Moon gets power on. counters like the <laughs> next card. Working prototype. One cost hostile asset with a trash cost of two. Whenever you raise a card, including this card notably, was a, this, including this card was easy to miss while we were testing it with proxies. And you get a power counter on this card. And for power counter, you get to gain three credits. Or if you have five power counters, you can gain six credits and inst add one installed resource to on top of the stack. Ba, you got an idea? Um, I like the fact that this is a purple card because it deals... Assuming that you can you can start getting that second like option, this deals with one of purple's biggest threats, which is Bankar, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you can keep returning their, their bank card to the top of the stack so that they can't use it, you know, it's not in play at the start of a turn, um, or you do that on on a particular turn just after you've pushed, then that's going to feel that's gonna feel kind of cool. Um, it's probably a cool card in Mirror Morph. Um, and that's 
that's all I see from it at the moment. I I toyed with putting this in a deck earlier, and then I took it out and put in two regoliths, and I I think the regoliths were probably the better option. Yeah, I, I think you know? this is feels like an Ace card as well. It actually ended up doing yep. more work for me while I was testing it. Like the second ability actually is surprisingly easy to turn on. At first look, I thought it like it's impossible to actually do the second effect. Opponent will just trash it. But like actually getting one at the start, getting every ice risk, it's a counter. So you don't actually even have to build some meme deck with warm reception or anything. You just can actually can get it quite consistently in Asa. Yeah. And bouncing a twinning is going to always feel like pretty incredible, right? Yeah, like bouncing twinning, bouncing bunker, both of those are really nice. Mm. I think it's fine. I think it's like... I don't think it's bad, is the thing. Like It probably mm. sits just right in the middle. I think it's like... Do you think B or B, yeah. C, I, kind I, of... It's like... I've seen good stuff from this. The problem where... Yeah, for, for me, it's a good card, but a good card that is not good enough to push the decks that it would mm -hmm. be go on, like, to be better than the good the stuff we already had. Like, Asa probably gets slightly better, but not better enough to be... Um, yeah, do you think this is, like, an auto-include in Asa? At the moment. Uh, probably not even that. Uh, I, I do think I like it more than Regolith, uh, just because getting resources it's pretty big right as an upside mm -hmm. um and the asa doesn't need regular money that often right because they have fully up yeah you just fully operational all of your credits so i think you're legit playing this um, for for more on uh, the second i would put regular in s tier andre <laughs> you asked like most regular loving person ever incredibly regular pill <laughs> yeah <laughs> Have you ever built a deck without a regolith in, the, in it? I, I, there are decks where a regolith isn't the best. <laughs> I, I'll uh, tell you, I'll tell you where this has has a higher level. I, that I is can't in. I think I haven't. I, I built P and like P E with regolith. By cutting out for anyone else. Oh yeah, you did for me for a second there. Ah. Uh, yeah, should be correct. Good now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> cool. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, no. Worries. So PE so deck is the only thing you have. Yeah. yeah? Go ahead. Sorry. It's, um, the one place where I see that this is actually really powerful is in uh, Eternal Kill decks. And that's, that's <laughs> because, like, this is kind of like, it works a bit like Malia. It gets rid of, it like blanks. Um, the kind of the I'm gonna stop you killing me combat, you know, yeah, like stuff it, like Citadel Sanctuary, you. everything like that. Yeah, C Citadel, um, but particularly like Paparazzi, mm -hmm. like you could bounce the Paparazzi back to hand and then do meat damage. So there's, there's probably something there which is might... better than Malia at that function, though. <laughs> no, but <laughs> like maybe you use them both because Malia is um, unique. unique, yeah. So you install this and yeah, then you go and fetch Malia or something. No one home. No one home is a problem for Malia, uh, which this gets. But mm. there's a, a lot of work just to deal with one card in. Uh, yeah. So I'm not sure it's obviously has a place, but yeah, it's but... worth looking into. Because Eternal Ob definitely needs more more things. <laughs> more support for the best deck deck in the faction yeah. or in the card pool. Right. Where, where are we putting it? I think it's it's better than. Warm reception, like it actually goes into most Asa decks, I think. So I'm in favor, of, like putting it in B. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, for me it's better. We're probably still C tier, but I can see B as well. It's like working man's card, <laughs> just fair honest. Until you put the opponent in a prison state or something with some jank deck. The uh, HP ice. Lucian, multi munition, three strength, uh, mythic eyes. It's Lycan, right? Lycan. Oh, that, that could work. Uh, strength one. When you raise this ice, choose one or more subtypes among barrier, code, gate, or sentry. And this ice gains that 
subtype. And for each of the types you choose, this gains a different ability. So a code gate gains runner loses one click and a credit. Sentry is trash one install program. And barrier is gain one credit and end the run. Yeah, this is like exactly the Thunderbolt support we needed, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's a Thunderbolt uh, card. Yeah. And it's probably cool in Thunderbolt. And it's probably... It's probably bankrupt you. <laughs> I mean, Does this have you... more than one subroutine in Thunderbolt, though? Like, if you choose Codegate or Barrier, they just cleaver through it. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's kind so of, this it, is basically it, just a three-cost thing that only trashes programs, really. Yeah, it's kind of like a big gear check. Gear check. It's if if this is your first ice, you're quite happy if you have the icon to actually push behind it. Like this is like the only card I actually put in my PD deck just to test out, because you can do actually actually pretty quick rush with this and something like Wobo -wo installed. Yeah, I think if you're playing two or three Vovos, then you consider this. If you're not playing two or three Vovos, maybe, well, and you're not playing Thunderbolt, which I think mm -hmm. you still would consider this because it has reasons. This, it's just not good enough. It's It just gets broken too easily. Yeah, strength one doesn't I mean it, that you can tax anything. And... Is this still in your PD deck, or have you taken it out? Mm, I actually haven't get ever rest it because okay. I just—it's a single, a single. Like you just play one, and I just haven't oh, yeah. drawn Dragon. it at all. <laughs> Drawing more than one of these does sound like I want to take both of them out of my deck immediately. Yeah, I, I have been just playing one and then you just don't even draw it. You don't draw your card that's good only in the early game. Feels kind of a non -bow. Oh, I like that call in uh, in chat. Uh, Shadow Dancer suggests it could be good in Ag Infusion. I don't hate that as an as an option. Hmm. Yeah, I like, like, I like when it uh, de-reses itself uh, in Ag Infusion. <sighs> Especially like this. I mean, if Tatabola wasn't a card, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Tatabola just does that so much better. Yeah, yeah but I here think... they might lose a click. They might lose a click. A whole click. Uh, I... I think we can just chuck, <laughs> we can chuck this in We can chuck this in D tier and move on. Yeah. You think like, D tier, actually? I, I can give yeah, it I... C. It actually does something in its like best use case. Yeah, but, but the best use case is never going to be a. Yeah, I think you you just literally <laughs> said the reason that like that that's not the case <laughs> because the best use case is you want it like turn one or two before the corp is set up and and what have you, and uh, you are and that means you're playing two or three of them in your deck and you're not and if you are then what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, then you draw all of them and just cry. Yeah, yeah I guess I have to. It's it's detail. Yeah, and then like, there's a world where someone builds a sick deck with it, uh, and it's not D tier. But we're gonna wait for someone else to do that. Uh, <laughs> then, uh, I don't think we're gonna be trying to do anything. Yeah, and then we can hush it. Fine. Oh, the, hushing this is so nasty. Um, yeah, maybe maybe don't. Wait. Oh, and... oh wait. All oh, right. Yeah, hush, hushing this is the horrible thing. That we have to yeah, yeah, yeah. You just hush it when it's face down, and then they're like, "Well, you literally just destroyed their eyes." That, yeah. yeah, and it even de-reses itself, so you can get that hush thing more yeah. easily. Luckily, okay. nobody is playing hush. Too D tier. Yeah, yeah, it's D tier. I think D tier is going to be full of HP cards at this pace. <laughs> because... No, this next one's cool. This next one. This is this it. Next one's cool. Yes, Corbin yeah. Blade, four coster, Sentry Destroyer, Strength Two. You cannot trash more than one installed runner card with this each turn, each encounter specifically. And then subroutines in order, trash one resource, trash one hardware, and trash one program. You actually think this does something, Ba? Yeah, well, I just think it's an interesting face check, which maybe people just don't play this, but 
the fact fact that it's got a trash trash one installed resource that is not something that we see very often um and it's like a i was gonna say it's a face check even for for seb but i've just realized that seb's gonna instantly just trash this with a crew right because it's exactly too strong oh yeah (laughs) so that's an issue um i'm immediately slightly less (laughs) less uh less convinced on it um, like it, exactly in a world where Iron Man Saber's crew gets banned and also Drafter gets banned, maybe we play this. I card. don't even play. I, this. I think, think I play ever, unless I play Roto Tarot before this. <laughs> like trashing resource is the worst thing yeah. you can have on a card, yeah, basically. Honestly. <laughs> like best thing for this is importing it into, into Meta where both is legal. And then using like Zeto grid combo to trash the boat. Yeah, I mean, I I could see that happening anyway because any anything that has this many options that you can Zeto grid, that's cool. Like that's an that's mm-hmm. an interesting thing. This gives you like some really interesting kind of play around. But yeah, maybe it's maybe yeah, it's that's... just a bit too. Too weak. If if Nana Civic Grid was still legal in startup, that would be real. Oh yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah. Like choosing what to trash with Nana Civic. And question in chat: Can you forego the trashes to get later ones? I don't think you can, right? No, you can't. No. Yeah, and that's yeah. Yeah. I, fires in order. I originally thought it was better than it was, but yeah, if you just have like a daily cast with two credits on it, and you run into this, then you lose your daily cast and you keep your knob curry or whatever it is that you've got ticking away um does it even combo like the fact that most does it even combo the fact with that multi-access yeah. is usually resources is probably yeah. means that that's not really a downside but yeah but like when your opponent bit... when is your opponent going to run with multi-access when they don't have a sentry breaker installed and like every sentry breaker breaks this easily well, I, I just mean that they can't they can't like run into it and choose to not break it because they don't care about their resources. Oh yeah, that's true. That often. Yeah, yeah. Because being being able to pay zero to get through this would be like annoying in some end games. But does, because you're gonna trash their multi access, that doesn't happen very often. Does anybody know how this interacts with Thunderbolt? Can you actually get like an end to run subroutine because that Bronner, you have already trashed something with the subroutine? So yeah, I'm pretty sure Thunderbolt says that the runner trashes the card, so that's fine. It's oh, just that Thunderbolt's a bad card. So. Yeah, no. so you don't even you don't even really combo this with that. Um, that's kind of sad. I think at least I'm putting it in D tier. Yeah, I think you talked me yeah. into it. I, I, I was I was like maybe this is C tier, but I I don't think it is anymore. Poor H. I think HP got some really bastard cards as well, so... Act like, active policing, zero-cost operation, that's terminal and grey ops. Play only if the runner stole or trash a corp card during their last turn. And when you re- resolve this, your op- action to phase ends. Install work con from HQ, and the runner gets minus one click. And if it's threat three, you can pay two, and the runner gets extra one minus click for the next turn. Did somebody play against Iron Fox with this install, like, tool asset deck or something already? Not yet. I have <laughs> thankfully avoided that fate. <laughs> this, this is the, like, first actually scary HP card that I see in the set. Yeah, this has, this has potential for really shutting down like like some i don't quite know exactly like it's not super obvious exactly what the deck is and whether it fits in that fool deck or whether it's actually in a, in a different deck entirely mm-hmm. but the ability to rob that many clicks reasonably consistently as long as you've got stuff that needs trashing um or you're playing it in a, a sort of um something with lots of agendas like sports metal or or Fule or something like that Oh yeah, that's robbing sounds... two clicks is like, you know, I mean, it can this can very easily make Ikua unstealable, right? Like, really yeah, super easy. easily. You just play, place it, place Ikua behind a uh, MIC or something, and it's almost unstealable already. It yeah. actually is already unstealable. 
the the one downside is that this is made really sad if most runner decks are not on three Hanna. Uh, so oh yeah, the extra like, clicks. No, I'm not a knock against the current abstract, but currently Thule decks seem pretty hard to get working if that's going to be the case. Mm. And there is like huge amounts of click gain currently with the new criminal resource as well. I, I've legitimately had like seven click turns in, in set, and so losing two of those would not have been. Yeah, it doesn't deal. really matter. Like, this is active, pretty nasty card against like fair runners, but if their opponent just gets a million clicks, I, this doesn't really hurt them at all. Like, my first idea was to put this into a PD deck, where you just in, like install advance, advance, or install the ECOA as your last thing, and your opponent literally cannot steal it. But actually, the requirement for the runner to actually steal or trash something doesn't just it doesn't fire in op pd at all almost no no i think you've got it you've got to build around here like you've got to build around this um but it does also like there definitely is a a, a world where this works really nastily in a kind of asset spammy type matchup mm -hmm. where you've got a wage workers out and you install free things and you hit the fourth your wage workers click is you play active policing and all of a sudden the runner's got like two clicks to check three things that you've put out even with a hannah like maybe they can check all three of them um but like if you've got any extra sort of click taxing going on like if you're if you're fule for instance or something like that or if there's any ice involved or you know like there's mm -hmm. There's definitely a world where that just becomes like a very tricky turn, um, and yeah, yeah, like extremely unfair card. Yeah, we're talking a lot about like the turns where this works, but these like seem pretty hard to assemble, right? In a, any sort of consistent fashion. So I'm not very hard. Yeah, no, probably mm. true. Is it really hard? Like, build... oh yeah, you cannot com combo combo it with. Oppo at all. Like yeah. a typical soul kill and doesn't like, really work. And... and Andre mentions cold sight, and that's probably something, but I think even in Mirror if you you would need an event to install an agenda and then install the, the cold sight and click it and use this. Oh, no, that doesn't even work. Yeah, because you event. don't even get that. Like you have to do three different actions, then play an operation as your last thing. It's really pretty hard to set up, but like the <laughs> no, the I think, ceiling it, I think is it's there. easy. You 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 assume that you already have the cold site in the server because you're mirror morph, that, and then you just that go seems like, like a hard cold. thing to assume, though. Ah, oh, I don't know. If you've got a cold site in the server, the server's normally quite hard to run as mirror morph. Um, so you well, can but, just go like install, advance, advance the cold site, play this. Well, but if we have a server with a cold site that we've already been keeping the runner out of, why do we need this on top of? Because the runner hasn't been able to get in so far. Just so the runner well, doesn't win off centrals or something. They have, yeah, they haven't had enough tempo to get. Maybe you've yeah. used your other tricks on it. You know, you've already like, they've, you've had a a skunk works there or something. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I think I I legit might play one of these in a PD deck just to hold and really like get the last three pointer in against something like control Hoshika or control that. Okay, that seems like a. If, if, opponent if steals you combine it with border control... Yeah, border control, MIC, and your opponent, nice. opponent almost can't steal anything. Then yeah. come on with another void. So I think this deck will see... This card will totally see play in a competitive deck, but maybe it's just not currently out there. Yeah, so, I'd be happy putting it quite high, but I think it's like B... It's I think it's B tier is where mm, I'm going. B tier? But... It's like the half of your clicks is, are gone already. But we have seven of them. And they're uh. not all gone. <laughs> <laughs> you will both look yeah. silly when somebody wins worlds with this. I think I would have put this at C oh, yeah. originally, and C I think it maybe be. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Isn't it? Well, this hey, card doesn't stall, so I guess the cold side is slightly more reasonable than I thought. Um, yeah. Can I get? Okay. You can in install your analytic void or something also. But we're, we're seriously going to put a card that we have no clue where it ever goes. It goes in P, like one of in PD. Well, we're, we're sure that that's going to yeah, yeah, like, be will a work. consistent thing that people do? I think so. 
I'd like, I will if do it. One, if, it, if it's a one of, then it's not an A tier or an uh, S tier card. If the, or yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be. A, I want to get one A card in HB. Well, well the next one. Yeah, probably, the next one is probably going. Yeah. <laughs> we saved the best for last. Yeah, corporate hospitality, a far cost operation. Uh, that has a trash cost of one, notably. As an additional cost to play this operation, spend one click. So it's a double. Gain six credits, draw two cards, and add one card from archives to HQ. Anybody have an idea why this is not called an, any something clearance? <laughs> I think oh. Biggest le- flavor fail ever. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna drop the ball on that one. Um, but it's busted out either way. You put three of these in PD and take out some of the bad cards. Yeah, you can take out like your, your normal econ, something like Grace in the Poem. I've, Sebastian is not too this, OP. This is actually good enough that it has convinced me to take Regolith out of my PD decks. So this means it must go in S tier. Oh, really? Yeah, like PD with recursion for seamless launches is so good. Opponent just imps them or I for an ice them and you just like get those back, score out. Double is kind of annoying to get set up, I guess. You cannot really score on the yeah. same turn that you do this. Double's annoying and a one cost cr- a trash, a one credit trash cost makes this. I mean, it makes it very balanced. It <laughs> makes it a far more balanced like version of. Um, of recursion, but I don't know. It's not recursion you can rely on. Yeah, I think you draw this, you play it on, on the same turn. Like in Ace, you play this just to get fully operationals back. Yeah. Um, I, I think ev- or, almost or every like HP Rashida, deck. You play, yeah. you play this and then you install Rashida. Like, oh, yeah, you still get the, all know. of the value and can install mm. all of your draw cards. Is this going in every HP deck ever? No. Uh, I mean, like, I maybe like there are some almost. weird ones that it doesn't go into, but... Yeah, like, Mirror Morph still plays this. You get your way. MCAs back, you get everything back. Mirror Morph hates this. Mirror Morph doesn't like playing doubles. Yeah, you but you get, your, you get your MCA up, like, back. And then you can install... This is good enough that you don't get Mirror Morph out of the turn you play. And it's, but maybe you don't play three in Mirror Morph for that reason. Maybe. No, 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 because you just play Reclaim, and then you get your Mirror Morph value. Like, Reclaim is a great Mirror Morph card. This is a bad Mirror Morph card. Okay, so it doesn't okay. go in every every HP deck, but almost every HP deck. <laughs> <laughs> is it Astir? I, I'm for no. playing it in Astir, yeah. No, no, you can't. <laughs> Are you serious? There's no way this is S tier. It's past the decon I was like, this is like B tier. Like, I, I haven't played with it enough to be steadfast in putting it in S tier, but I'm pretty sure. How is this B wow. tier with like working prototype or active policing? Or active policing should be A tier, but like working prototype is a honest card and corporate hospitality is not an honest card that you play. You get some like complete BS back with it and then you just do all of the unfair stuff that like these clearance cards allow you to do. I think it's best. I think it's best. Home is going to be in in yellow decks, and that that's all I really think. Like, and it's probably really good in yellow decks where you play this, you draw two cards, you gain some credits, and then you play an oppo. Um, mm. and... Oh, that's like that that like that's also busted. Even more reason for it. <laughs> <year. laughs> yeah, you just then, upsold like, it. <laughs> no, 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 but then you're not doing the thing that you need to be doing on the turns where you're oppoing, right? Which is jamming something in a remote and then playing an oppo so you're actually causing a like you can't because oh, you just tax the clicks, corporation it for it, your whole goal. you just tax the corporate runner for eight credits and a turn uh four credits thank you very much oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tax non aster runners for eight credits yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. i i can't see this being s tier i'm sorry i i will i think it's b tier so like i'll I don't know. Bar's Maybe getting overruled here, right? Mm, yeah, right. I mean, you can straight up overall. Yeah, me. I, I did it. So you get there, but... Yeah, I think two versus one. 
I thought about putting it in Aether just to balance things out, but I just cannot. It it does okay. so much for you. As a PD enjoyer, I have to put it in Aster. I'm playing three of these in every deck. Yeah, Labar will see the light at some point. Yeah, yeah. after somebody beat him with this deck. But you, you can get DRM with it, isn't that? <laughs> 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 DRM? Oh, that's, that's actually pretty hype. I should not have said that publicly. <laughs> <in, in laughs> yeah. <private laughs> Oh, Instantly after I said, you can get anything from it. Right, okay, let's I move can, on. I can, I can cut the feed, on. edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, next one, I think some people in our testing group have been kind of hype on this, but uh, Brasilia government grid, zero cost upgrade, <laughs> trash cost of three. Whenever you rest a piece of ice during a run against this server, you may de-raise another install piece of ice. If you do, the rest ice gets plus three strength for the remainder after that turn. Run. Use this ability only once per turn. I think, like, first time I saw this, I was instantly thinking about some busted combo with how Carl and just infiniting this. But yeah, I guess the, the rules team was a bit busted with this. The big yeah, biggest but... problem is that whatever combo you put with this just gets destroyed, and then you don't have a deck. Um, so I think this is completely unplayable until our Rensera's crew gets banned. Unfortunate. I mean, you say and that. Even but after it, then... It, but it's like put, when we're... It put anywhere anywhere. Well, out of, well out of a crew. This You can't you can't necessarily trash an, trash an ice which has been res with this. Like, well, but they can but they can one... trash all like your ablative barriers that you're trying to do fun stuff with. They just trash them for free. Yeah, you, yeah, do, you don't, don't get your I... like dearest de res value, but you just get like one piece of big ice. And like, yeah, Iron Serious Crew doesn't literally trash the ice that you're resing with this, but it does basically negate anything you're doing, especially if they have some leech counters lying around. Yeah, maybe. Basically, the one game I played against Thunderbolt so far, they did at one point res a Harkar using one of these. De-resing something else with the Harkal, and so I couldn't click through it, and I think I ended up having to pay about twelve credits to break a Harkal. And I was like, "Well, mm. if this makes <laughs> Harkal playable, then that's fun." Obviously, then I trashed it, and then they couldn't do anything it again. Yeah, like, but yeah, and also you could have just taken a core damage and then ran back and paid four credits, right? Ah, uh, that is or true. I hadn't take... considered that at the time. I think I'd already taken two cores. <laughs> Like, okay, know, okay. Like, I probably shouldn't take another. Yeah, that's fair. It, like, this doesn't actually defend itself really well. And so you just, like, run back and trash this, and your opponent's whole setup basically falls apart. Yeah, we can put yeah. it in, uh, in D tier. All, like, one notable thing I want to say about these cards is that it's a region. And what does PG, PD, like, HP have multiple of? Like, really busted region assets or upgrades. You just yeah. DTR, I, right? Getting getting to not play Trank Grid is really tragic. Yeah, is DRC? It at least does some like cool combos. Uh like maybe in a vacuum it's higher than D, but currently it's definitely. Oh yeah, especially yeah. You cannot really do anything, any like ping thing. You know where this would be good? No, it this would be this would be uh, no no this is. <laughs> Just be really interesting in Ag Infusion. I wonder if anyone's been toying around with that yet. This is like what? wink, wink, I'm... nudge, nudge or something. We're, we're, we're going to have to give Bar talking to about leaking secrets. Um... <laughs> Wait, that, that's not been talked about, has it? I don't think I, that's been talked about. I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't <laughs> think it has been, but... We, it maybe has, but maybe has. Uh, we have to okay. do some uh, like fake, fake leaks as well, just to mix up our normal leaks. Uh, this is like I, I've only just thought about that, but this seems, you know, and and there's some. Yeah, but then you cannot play like La Costa Grid with one bastard card that we will see later. Has is anyone playing La Costa Grid nowadays? Like, I, well, yeah, okay, it's better with Charlotte, whatever. But you know, if you potentially do this and you res a big old cloud eater and you de-res a thimble rig or a. Tatty Bowler or something. And yeah, and then Boops. Yeah. 
Can you can, can we start talking about the next card while yeah. Hawk gets the jank out of his system? <laughs> <laughs> I can put That's, it in C because I, I think, boss. I it, it, it actually can't do it. Do do it will do some, something. I put it in yeah. C. C is fair. It's better than this thrush heap. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Okay. Fair. So, like, like universal maybe thunderbolt th wants its own um, its own tier behind it, so that we don't feel bad putting things alongside it. Yeah. Uh, this is better than thunderbolt. Talk right. Yeah, that's true. Like opinion on HP in general, it's it's kind of whack <laughs> unless you look at corporate hospitality, right? It's I, Thunderbolt and Thunderbolt yeah. support. So if you don't think Thunderbolt's play, if you don't think Thunderbolt's strong, then the set isn't strong for HP, and it's it's quite. Yeah. But some people are going to really enjoy playing Thunderbolt, and they're going to love these cards. Yeah, it's and, basically and like if, Soul. If you're playing it, yeah. If you're playing Thunderbolt, then these cards are all great cards. Like. Yeah, we, we, we've we established that we don't care about fun or anything. <laughs> we care about who wins AMTs, and Thunderbolt's not going to win an AMT. Uh, corporate hospitality is going to win AMTs. Yeah, I think we can jump into the next card, and the first Chintek card as well. In, see how it's they a, run. It's a good one, too. Yeah, it doesn't really feel like an agenda, this name, but I guess it's one. A 4-2 agenda? Not a good number. When you score this agenda, give the runner one tag and play a Psy game. And if you do cor different amounts, do one damage, core damage, and if they match, do one net damage. I want to just point out that you, Aksu, the perennial PD player, just said it's a 4-2. That's not a good number. It like, is not a good number in anywhere else than PD. <laughs> uh, that's right. Well... Yeah, fair. Um, I mean, this is this has got some real power to it. This this has got some. There's some very big combo potential here, mm -hmm. which is uh, already fairly clear. Um, anything that's in Jinteki that potent like in faction that potentially does a core damage is pretty powerful. Yeah. Also, not yeah, even the, the core damage. Has two modes is real nice, right? You can kill them with it. Uh, I hope all of chat is aware that this can kill with end of the line. Mm -hmm. Or you can just deal them a core damage. Um, like if you manage to never advance it and have a wage workers, do you, actually, you just yeah. boop them. Do you actually ever play this if you are not on the end of the line kill plan? Uh, well, if you play this, you probably should have an end of the line of your, in your deck, right? Yeah, like uh, four well, without have, an actual plan. Yeah, you should have a way of dealing... You need to have a way of using that tag. If you're not yeah. using that tag for anything, then you should be playing... I mean, you should be playing, like, viral weaponization over this. Like, no. Over the <laughs> like, you maybe you should not, not be playing that, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, but, yeah, this yeah, is would... so, like, frustrating card because, like, you just get this... Any card double advanced, the runner kind of has, has to check it or just lose the game next turn. Right. The only thing that's that makes me not put this in S tier is that I haven't actually I have spent a good bit of time trying to build a deck that does this. Uh and it's not easy. Like you you need to get a lot of things to line up in good ratios, which is hard to do. Yeah. So it's a card that some but, somebody will will find like a busted way to use. Yeah. And, uh, that I'm hundred yeah. percent sure of. It, like even if you just play like mitosis and you hit this card, up, that's like a one turn setup for a kill the next turn if the opponent doesn't interact with you. Yeah, you 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 want to know the, the sickest thing is, and uh, I mean no one will be surprised to hear this. If you mitosis down this and an orbital superiority, <laughs> uh, obviously you don't have to check neither of them, but they're uh, you know. This uh, this opens up orbital superiority red decks, which is and you have to have a way to like double advance. Up. One of the with... yeah, the the fact that burner is like guarantees you safety. Uh, oh yeah, burner like, is like, really good. <laughs> great, um, and like uh, steel skin, you kill through some of the time. I'm not sure. Like you're better than fifty fifty to kill through steel skin, but I don't know what happens if there's two steel skins or whatever. Uh, I think it's one in five that you kill kill through the steel skin, right? 
Or uh, yeah, you have to hit twice, right? Yeah, you have to miss twice. Oh. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. I, are we saying how powerful is this? Are we saying this is like A tier? I think it's like, like it, it builds its own archetype, so it's it's going yeah. to like be pretty messed up. But is the messed up deck like S tier or A tier? It's hard to say. I don't think it's S tier because I don't yeah. think like there is play around to it. You also like have this kind of slightly weird deck where you're playing one or two very big influence pieces which you're expecting to find and get this out and all of yeah, that. Yeah, especially but, in a meta with huge amounts of disruption, it's kind of hard. Yeah. But those those decks will people are gonna lose to those decks. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're gonna lose to the like oh I didn't run run the right mitosis target type thing. So yeah, I I will. Like, I I can see this doing well in tournaments. I mean, like um, Jessica Marbles came like what like thirteenth at Worlds with you know like basically mitosis PD. Uh, PE, mm-hmm. sorry. Um, and QTM had some like, like can... similar kind of idea with like PE, yeah. just like mid range PE that this probably fits really nicely into. Yeah, possibly. I think it's better in traps, but like, but maybe mid range is fine. Yeah, it, it's just like a really good card based on numbers. And yeah. if scoring a 4 or 2 was bad. Imagine scoring a 5-2. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just read the 5-2 two, two part and put it in D tier? Uh, I have actually seen this being played like way too much compared to like how hard this is, it is to get out. So, first time each turn, the runner passes a rest code gate or a sentry. You may pay one or trash one card from HQ. So you may pay one and this is blank. If you do, the runner encounters that ice again. If you manage to get it on table, the effect is actually pretty powerful, right? It is, yeah. but it completely turns off one of the best cards in the entire set on the corpse side. Because this... this I, well, I thought this was like alright until I realised that it is the first time each turn the runner passes... Like, like you don't get any choice on this, right? Mm-hmm. And... There's going to be a card which we're going to get to in a minute, which we're going to all talk about, and we're going to say how great it is. Oh, and that, is also <laughs> going to, that is also going to be the first time you pass a code gate every single turn in any game where you're playing that card. Yeah. And this, that's not a card which you want to use Sisyphus Protocol on. So you're like, you have this incredibly powerful tool, and you've gone all your, you've gone out of your way to score a five-two, which turns the, like, which does nothing. If you want to use your incredibly powerful tool, yeah, and this loses. This loses to ice destruction. If your op- if your opponent just trashes all of your analysis and big code gates and sentries, this yeah. just doesn't do anything. And if your opponent is on turbine, your tax like goes dramatically down. Yeah, I think mean, this is bad. Like this is yeah. this is very. It will blow up look. somebody who's playing like criminal and actually pl- trying to play a fair game. You will hate to actually run into this. But other than that, and like you don't even want like you see a five to, five to agendas with with active text, you instantly think stuff like regenesis, but you don't want to be regenesing out five two, because you actually have to then score another like three po- four points somehow. It doesn't it definitely work. does not yeah. go in regenesis text. Yeah, I will reserve the right to say that I'm only calling it D tier because of psyop and we have something internally cooking, but. Um, I what can't specify which way it goes. Do we I'll actually have something? Anyway. What? Oh, we, no, no, we, uh, we definitely don't. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, double like, up psyop, um, I chuck, guess. Chuck it, yeah, DTR. Chuck it in the bottom and move on. <laughs> Next, Charlotte. Augustus, help me. <laughs> uh, Casador. Casador. Or <laughs> zero zero cost clone asset. You can advance this asset. When your turn begins, you may move, remove one hosted advancement counter to gain four credits and draw one card. And then if you have an advancement counter, you can trash this to gain three credits. Uh, this is, yeah. I love this card. Um, I 
like like see how they run i haven't gotten it to work out mm -hmm. fully either which is unfortunate um but like on raw power um if yeah some, the ability is just so great and like you just put it into again fusion glacier deck and like build yeah. a busted daily quest with the lago right la costa grid uh, okay. Costa, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't yeah. even need La Costa Grid. Like you probably play La Costa Grid in that deck anyway, but you don't need them to combine the two. You can just advance this. Yeah, just this fairly. Ad, like you just click for a cre four credits and one ad, one draw. Somebody and I, I, I don't know where it was. It might have been on Andre's stream, but someone mentioned this in BTL, and all of a sudden I was like, oh my! Like the value. <laughs> oh my! In BTL, you're like advancing it. You get a credit. You get to, or you, where's it? You get two credits, but you, but you put the advancement on it. Then you gain the four credits. You draw a card, and that removes the counter, so you can do it again. Like this is way better than like, I mean, yeah, BTL is very stacked, cards, and it's but, it's just like good yeah, effect. Like Plus, you still get like the NGO value with this card. Mhm. Mm I, mean, I, so I don't think this is price. actually good in Prav. Because if you have this out, they just no, don't run it. Yeah, so they... you still have you still have to advance it, uh, which is very awkward. Mm -hmm. um, like I guess you can play it. You can play it. if you have influence spare in Prav. You it's probably better than other options. Uh, but it like the play patterns with it are very awkward there. Yeah, it doesn't fit in that deck probably. But like I think almost every Chintaki deck is going to play this, even without stuff like yeah. Lacosta. Even like going I would be surprised advanced. if they weren't, yeah. Yeah, it competes with NGO, but... Mm, yes, I, I, I guess I can see you playing NGO instead of this sometimes, but... It's also got an incredible power level in Startup, which has never had that NGO. Oh, yeah. That's like, oh, yeah. Whereas all of a sudden you've got this, like, I'm going to install double advance something. That's almost always been an agenda in startup, with the exception of if you're playing like like Urtikas and, and what have you. But then that's mm. always like a fairly obvious deck. All of a sudden, you're like, install double advance, and it might just be a Charlotte that you can crack for free credits after forcing them to run through ice. So yeah, that's pretty scary. You know, so uh, is I think it... that's pretty interesting. It's Aster, right? No. No? I think it's, a. it's like, like A or B. The, the fact that there isn't like a concrete shell for it. Just I it it's just a, so much raw value, right? It's Yeah, but it doesn't like win mm. you games, does it? Like S tier. Eker like, wins, wins you games, huh? Games. I'm also not sure what Agnifusion does against the Arun Seiras crew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it does dunk on everything equally, but like especially Agnifusion, to be fair. I think I think it's I think it's a very I think it's a good card. I think it's a really good card. I don't think it's like I think you could take it out of decks that it's in and put something else in and it'd still work fine. And like just know, just like, like a raw power card, yeah, kind of like yeah. hedge fund. Yeah, yeah, I, I think like you could spot for it. You could swap this with NGO and it would probably be fine. It's not going to be quite as good, but yeah, yeah. I guess A is fine then. Then cohort guidance program, one one cost asset. When your turn begins, you may resolve one of the following: trash one card from HQ. If you do, gain two credits and draw a card. Turn then other option: turn one face down card in archives face up, and then place one advancement counter on an installed card. Extremely powerful effect, right? But yeah, also the first the first part is actually very good value too. Um, mm -hmm. like you get to cycle bad cards out of HQ and get double pad campaign out of it. The only problem with this card is that I don't, it competes way too much with Charlotte, right? So mm -hmm. I don't see where you play this. Yeah. You don't want this is sitting in a remote compared to Charlotte and like there just is not a Jintaki asset deck currently out there, right? Yeah. And leaving this on ice is sad because it, Costs two to trash. Cost only. two, and you don't really have a reason to leave it unrest because it's not political or anything. Yeah. Mm. I'd um, like. Uh, I I played against this earlier. Someone was using it in in Nuvum, and 
I, this is like one of the cards which I didn't really. It must have just kind of passed me by when when scoops came out because I kind of didn't really know what it did. I remember seeing the art and thinking it was creepy as all hell. <laughs> um, and when the they came when I when they read them on the table, I decided there was too much text on it and I just went and trashed it. Um, and I still I still wasn't really sure what I, <laughs> what it did. <laughs> um, but I was like. You know that kind of seems cool in Nuvem because you've probably got a load of face down cards, which uh, maybe you don't mind turning face up. Like or, as an, or what, just, what are you advancing with this? Yeah, I don't think the well, second mode doesn't do anything in Nuvem. It's just the first one, right? Yeah, well, I think something? they were doing. I think they were doing. They had clearing houses and stuff, so there was clearly like oh. some plan there. And this you could do before clearing house, right? You could like sneak a. Uh, like, and they had on they had two clearing. remotes in a Nuvem deck. No, but I just oh, didn't was, want to read this. Out. As like, as 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 this. From Nuvem? Yeah, I I don't know exactly what it was doing, but it had these. It had like hearts and minds. It was it was quite nuts. Um, um, oh yeah, if you combine this with like hearts and minds, you can probably get a pretty scary clearing house. Yeah, I I think that I assume that was their plan. Um, but all I of just that costs. Yeah, yeah. Like, the fact that this and hearts and minds both cost only two it makes that really unreliable. Yeah, you have to do some like sicko stuff to actually keep this on table. So we put it in C tier or something. Uh, or? Yeah, it it's a powerful effect, but it's just so hard to keep around. I think if if but, you yeah. can get a like a Jinteki asset spam list, I think this actually will turn out pretty like actually great there so if rp ever gets reprinted yeah or or if there's a scary enough like pe asset spam style thing i'll tell you he probably loves this card isawak probably loves this card but um but, but I, even I, in isawak you just go and no. trash this you have way better cards in isawak well yeah but you're not you're not showing them it until you until the the you know the whole point is that you're just probably putting a whole load of stuff out face down and um, you know saying, but I don't know what what how so you, you want to play it like the bad asset spam version of Isuak. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, like no, you're, you're like, no. Maybe, maybe <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> okay, so yeah, no, don't let that be yourself out of this one. <laughs> yeah, next one. Acute fish. Boto, I guess. Six cost uh, barrier. AP. Strength four. Threat four. This ice gets plus two strength. And subroutines two two net damage. You may trash one card from HQ and enter on twice. Actual, like, good Jintaki barrier, finally. <laughs> Goodbye, Evie. Okay. This is my new best friend. I say it's an okay. Jinteki barrier actually... and I mean that's you know it's it's certainly better than almost everything else we've got right now in terms of being taxing although mm -hmm. Tasubola is a very good barrier um yeah. I've, for... I've gotten to threat four with this card and it did seem it, like it's, it's better it's than brand at six the strength four like threat four no, yeah no. but it's... we all okay. know imagine punitive RH you get a regenesis and this turns on and it's ca yeah, kind of I like know. actually yeah. nice. It's like way better than Atini, at least. So um, my issue with it yeah, is um, someone someone pointed out that you could just put a slap vandal on this, and then you can like assuming this is like the outside ice, you only ever kind of need to break that first sub, because the court can't keep trashing stuff from from hand, right? So you're like mm -hmm. you just break the two net damage, and you say what do you want to do? And they're like, oh, I've, well, I've, I've trashed a card from hand to end the run. And you're like, okay, I'll run back. What are you <laughs> going to do? Um, and you're just paying a credit each time. And so it, like, that made me kind of, uh, you, yeah. You can you know. do that, but if there's a Regenesis behind that, you are like kind of spinning your wheels and they're scoring a Regenesis. So. Yeah. Okay. That's and fair. Like, if you play against a fair deck, like Cleaver into this is pretty whack already. It costs five to break with a cleaver without pressing like 
the turbine. And after you get to mm-hmm. strength, strength six, it costs five again. Yeah, it, it does scale nicely in terms of like it scales up to a level that is relevant when the decks are probably scaling themselves up. Yeah, well. like both so of the I... strength numbers are good on this. Yeah, yeah. To be clear, I, I don't think we're taking tattoo bolos out of our decks to play this. But no, but you difficult. you you start taking Athenis out to play this, I think, and Pampurunasa, probably. Well, uh, Vampy's pretty good. No, Vampy's don't, like, yeah, I, like I don't get how you yeah. it's yeah, yeah. so Vampy Vampy's actually build. trash. <laughs> I remember that they they printed a card that kills Vampy. <laughs> but it's not it's not A tier uh, good. It's just like B tier good. Yeah, no, I think it's yeah. like it's, it's B. It's B. Yeah. It's, it's solid. It's solid. Solid B tier for it. Like it doesn't feel much better than the other cards we have in B tier. But I think I've advocated for those cards to be lower. So that makes sense. Okay, I guess I can put it here. It's like a working man's card again. Yeah. Then the big the lad, <laughs> Cloud oh. Eater, strength uh, costs 10 to res, strength 6, and then like a really busted effect. Whenever an encounter with this ice ends, if it was to rest this turn, trash one installed runner card unless the runner takes two attacks or suffers three net damage. And then same thing as to your subroutine, so trash one installed runner card, get two attacks or Good. two Good, I announce you get out of all my decks. Oh. Really? This is unique, so we can't actually oh, yeah. replace all of the announces. Uh, but yeah. if it wasn't unique, I would I would play no announces. Um, yeah. Great. Strength 6, so good in this meta with Cleaver and stuff. And it actually becomes ha- really hard to break with the crew, right? Yeah. It's not impossible. You will feel very sad when they manage it. Yeah. But you live. Even then, like, if they face check into this ice, you just lose the game. Probably. I don't think this is a common thought, but I love it when my opponent reses an Anansi uh, and spends eight uh, to do nothing. <laughs> TM. Yeah. Uh, but with this, they definitely can't afford to do that. So. Yeah, like, that, like this is this is a I I've kind of just re uh no I guess they they don't ever have to take six net damage right so I was just about to say this like definitely kills them but it doesn't no yeah but I mean. It yeah, doesn't kill them, is, but even taking two tags is so good. Yeah, uh, trashing a card like like if they if they lose a card, they lose two tags, which is like four credits and two clicks. Assuming that you're doing something with the tags, or like they want to play a resource at any point mm-hmm. in the game, um, and you're doing free net. I mean, this is like yeah, this is like the nastiest face check in history of Netrunner, right? Well, size and tan is technically nice well size and time if you roll badly yeah but like i mean if, uh, like if they have anything installed this is worse than size and time i think yeah i'm getting because size and time doesn't kill that often you get basically opposed it's three damage and one of your card gets trashed yeah it's we're not putting it in s tier though right it's um, yeah 10 cost is quite a lot 10. but like egg infusion you play this and your opponent just cannot face check anything And I have seen like J- Jane at Casual play si- this with Size of Protocol, which is kind of oh, yeah. Yeah. it's the, pretty the, funny. This is this is like Jane at Casual Wet Dream. This kind of <laughs> like, it does it does everything that they want it to do. Um, they don't care that they're poor; they just want to inflict pain. Yeah, massive pain. Um, but like. I played one of these in the re- re- Restoring Humanity deck, just to make your opponent respect it. So you play two, surely, right? Yeah, it's technically unique. Mm, yeah, but... I guess. Like, Agin Fusion plays, I think, three, because it's, you can still use it as boop target. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. I think you want, you also, as Ag- and as Ag Infusion, you potentially want to it res really early as well. Like, you're quite happy if this is the first piece of ice that you end up resing. Um, yeah, because you just poop them into it. Yeah, well, yeah. the first check penalty is just so good. I think, yeah, but 10 strength means that you are not going to see this everywhere. We also can't put it in S tier because we're putting the next ice in there. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, next ice tributary. I always say tribunal accidentally. Thres- costs 3, strength 4, first time each turn. 
a run begins, you may move this eyes to outermost position protecting the attacked server. And subroutines, you may draw one card and install piece of ice from HQ, protecting an other server, ignoring all costs. And each piece of ice gets plus two strength for reminder of this turn. Yeah, Augustus, where you were saying something about this card. The, this is just a nutty card. Like an effect like this, if it like just the first part where it lets you draw a card and install ice, that's like your opponent having to deal with that every single time to make any run. Um, is pretty nutty. Like you just get so many more cards than a normal corp if you have this rest early and then force your opponent to interact. Now resing this has been an issue. Uh, so it's like better in decks that can, I don't know, put it on a remote and force them the opponent to interact with the remote mm -hmm. or res it through other means. Um, but I've like I've when this is in your deck, honestly, runners are so much more hesitant to run remotes just because you getting this rest early is just such a setback for them um it just does everything and then randomly gives your ice strength i guess yeah if, that also in, in, the late, in the late game your opponent tries to do anything they still taxes them if they're on unity it's just minus three credits every first time you run yeah like they can they can technically do things like run archives to blank the last subroutine but then they're spending a click running archives for no reason and you're still yeah. really happy and this Notably turns off a couple of key cards in the meta game, right? <laughs> like yeah. good so luck this playing. Is, Go ahead. This is so this is probably one of the strongest cards in the set um on the corp side. There's like a, a a few which are jockeying for that position. Um maybe isn't quite the very, very tippy top, but it's very much up there. That's what I thought before I played it. Today I've actually had a chance to to play with this card a little bit, and I remain thinking the same. I was, <laughs> play, I was playing this in Asa. I had two copies of it in Asa. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my games, I managed to kind of force a run on it, like turn one, because obviously you, you're gonna like charge um, purple ice, like mm -hmm. like turn one. Like why wouldn't you? Like uh, so I had a tributary res from turn one. It was a 10 turn game tributary fired eight times and the only times it didn't fire was when i chose not to fire it <laughs> like i got a, so much value off this one free cost res it was insane game two played against our uh, testing partner warlock he installed a bank card turn two, <laughs> ran into a tributary. I turned off his bank card for the entire game and he he was sat there kind of and, and he just said I just don't feel like I can run anywhere. And I was like, you can't. <laughs> like, like it feels great. And then I sat on the other side of it playing um, Arasana into um, into Ob just now. And and uh, uh, Pencil Res is a tributary. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I can't. Like, as Arasana, you want to run, like, once mm -hmm. a turn. I was stupid enough to realize that I hadn't put a hush in my deck and I couldn't run anywhere. Like all of a sudden my like Aristotle value is gone because if I run anywhere, he's going to get ridiculous amount of efficiency and value. Um, This is insane. This is a great card and it's high enough strength, but it is still attacks, you know, I mean, outside of fully set up buzzsaw, um, buzzsaw with, turbine, uh, yeah. turbine, even then, it's still a credit. <laughs> like it's yeah, just, like it's, it's basically like a free credit. A free and imagine credit. Play, imagine playing kit in a meta where this is popular. It just yeah, I mean, I, turns of kit ability completely. <laughs> it does. You've got to like. I'll tell you what. You've got to really because I I played against a kit player and I was like, oh, this is going to be easy days. I realized that you've got to be really careful that you put your tributary somewhere where it's going to get rezzed very very oh, early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I and I didn't, and all of a sudden I was like, "Oh no, this should be an easy game," and it's not. Um, yeah, just because they didn't like rest your bastard eyes, like. Yeah, I, I... this is this is S tier every day of the week. I guess Banker specifically, it it, it doesn't completely defeat Bankar. Jeff does mention that you can run archives. Um, to like diffuse it and then bank our server. The problem is that they do get to install ice on 
those on server the server, but you do have a bank card. card. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not a, ideal kind of they don't have ice in hand. Yeah, but so it, you have it's to like not, it, this you can play around it sometimes, but it's not fun yeah. to play around. You can play around this, and then you ha- you your play around this card is that you lose a click, basically a, a turn. Yeah, that seems yeah, good. You, you only do that if like you know that there's an agenda in the remote that you're bank carrying, and you're confident that they don't have ice in hand. Yeah, but it still yeah. forces your opponent to make like <laughs> kind of absurd like play, play pattern just to deal with this one ice. That costs three to raise. Yeah. Like, it's, it's automatically going in. Yeah, three. totally. Uh, it's not quite the best card in the set, but it's close. Yeah, it's really close, but there's a couple of really messed up cards that are going to be seen. Install, like using, using Green Chat, it says that like you install a real breaker and you're fine. You're still playing three to break it every time. I actually bet against our testing partner Jai for that this card is going to be played in 75% of world's decks this year <laughs> or gets banned before that. I, uh, Ax- Axel has a good track record when it comes to banning. Yeah, but I think like I, ac- I accidentally meant to say top 75% of the cut decks notably, but <laughs> already went and shake on it. I, like, I think Jess is taking you on in this bet. I, I think I think he's invested. I think you should. Uh, I think you should open the odds up. Yeah, just challenge the whole Netrar community into a bet that I am automatically losing. Because even both probably okay, didn't reach seventy five percent during world. Let's move on because yeah. we are a third of the way through. And uh... oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I need it's to be better at pushing that. Yeah, next card, bring them home, zero credits, terminal operation. Play only if Terran is or trash a corp card during their last turn. Uh, then reveal and add two cards at random from the cor- grip on top of the stack. And then you play may pay two extra to reveal one extra card. Um, card. And then runner shuffles the deck after this last part. It's a busted PE card, right? Oh. I don't see it as clearly. Like it's, it's good if you get it off in PE, but PE has a big slots problem currently. So I don't know that it runs this that many of these. You think like your opponent deals with this? You go install, install, and or even like you go my toes is then bring them home, and your opponent is kind of messed. Like, they cannot really challenge you at all. Or if they do, you, they just lose. I don't know. Like, runners are playing Nuka and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I, I I feel like if Genex Pavilion was still a card, this would be sick. Uh, Genex Pavilion is not a card. I think this is fine. I don't I don't see this one being, being the power card of set. Like... I think it will. I think it will turn up in some decks, but I'm. I'm not. I I like think this is potentially annoying. It can set up some like kind of. Ah, uh, you can't steal because I've got a Daniela and like there's a data loop and. It's what have you going much on, out of but... hand. Like is the cards are not going completely, but it's basically three damage for zero credits. Yeah, like, but it's well, not like, like they do have to have trash something as well. So like you know, it is something trash or stole. To... Notably, in PE, you have like fifteen million agendas. Yeah, I, just, I think it's okay. I, I, I don't think it's that powerful. I currently have it at like C, where I think this probably will do some work in some decks, but it's not clear what those decks are or how good they will be. Right? I'm not going to put it below C. So best you fellas can yeah, get this I'm B. No, I think I, I think C is. I think no, it can't be C. Like, come on, the ability is wild. I, I have, like you. It's it's on the edge for me, so I can I can get with a B. Uh, there's never so. been an ability that can do this amount of thing, like damage out of nowhere. It's fake damage, yeah, but still, uh, three cards. This yeah uh, yeah maybe maybe C is a bit low for it. Like the I, I think like. 
if we like we'll probably this will probably end up in B tier at some point during the meta, but it's like not clear how that we'll get to that point. Is the only reason I have it lowered. <laughs> I will play a PE deck just to bring it into Aster. <laughs> Personal <laughs> mission apparently. Uh, then, Jinteki got some good stuff. Nice. Yeah, like Jinteki is kind of opposed to, <laughs> opposed to what HP was doing. Four yeah, cards in A or Aster is such a good amount. Apparently clones are better than Byroids. You know, who's winning that fight? Mm. You heard it here first, folks. HP didn't get any py- Byroids this set. I didn't? No. Oh my God. It's like the full lore. Oh. There we go. Yeah. So Should we move on to NBN? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we can gotta push it on. So ne- basically a five four three king making four four two agenda. When you score this agenda, draw up to three cards. You may add one agenda worth one or less agenda points to from your HQ to score area. I I think Please I've been tell me that you think this is good. This is this is like bad, right? This is no, like not huh? gonna do that. Are you for real? Oh gosh, Axie, no! It's surely. a four-three, <laughs> four-three. Come on! Oh, it's a four-three uh, with, with big strings attached. What strings? You just play a three oracle and have those sitting in your hand in R plus. I think this revives the like Sparrow Brawler archetype basically. The problem with it is that yeah, it's a four-three, but how are you scoring a four-three? It's Hollow Man, right? So it might as well be a five-three. You can play Seamless Launch or something. But you play Seamless Launch when Hollow Man is in faction? I guess. Like, this is... I, I can agree that this has a, a raw power out there, but I don't see how it fits anywhere at the moment. After Hollow Man gets banned, it's Aster, right? <laughs> yeah, after Hollow Man gets banned. Yeah. Like, like, the raw, raw power lever is, like, way up there. I think some people think that you play Aras with this. I don't think you do that. I think you just sit yeah, three that oracles in your deck and use this as like a tempo card. Yeah, Spiral Builder is pretty bad, so I'm not sure if it, that would be S tier. Um, but like, I could I could see an A or a B in a world where there's no Hollow Man, but that's not the world we live in. Now, even with Hollow Man, you like... <laughs> yeah, Hollow Man is kind of busted, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, we put it in B tier um, and then reevaluate when Hollow Man gets banned. But I really want to put it in A tier. Oh, no, this is, you You genuinely can't, because I would be putting this in C or D. This is, like, B tier at the very best. Like, and I I, I think that's that's a push. Really? I think if you're D-tier? scoring this, you could be... There's there are at least three other four twos which you would much rather be scoring at almost any point in the game um and if you're scoring this just to get like an extra point yeah. just an extra point come on <laughs> like you you the you ideally want to score two crypto crashes on one of these yeah and that's a pretty good scoring pattern yeah, but you don't really want to score two of these. Like the, oh, yeah, Richard. only problem with it's this good is... scoring pattern, the, but it's a weird-ass agenda sweep, then. Yeah, like, you cannot play Bellonus yeah. with this. It's, like, the big big problem. Exactly. <laughs> so, like, why are you not playing Bellonus in your deck? Uh, because like, I, it's a 4 Bellonus three. also going to get banned, and then it's busted. Yeah, ban all of the good HP and be cards, and you can play this. I Like, yeah, it doesn't fit anywhere, but it's... The, exactly. Just, <laughs> the the next one is easy because it's a bad 4-2, right? Yeah. So we can just put it in the tier and move on. Yeah, stock the embers, 4-2. When you score this agenda, gain three credits, place one advancement card on an installed card. When you install this agenda from anywhere except HQ, you may reveal it. If you do, gain two credits, place one advancement card on an installed card. Wait, it's only two credits? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> has, <laughs> they really did not want to give us any money. Has anybody figured out a real combo with this? Uh, the uh, combo is just not a... playing it and then having a good deck. No, no, it is. I mean, it's an epiphany card, and that's that's all it's there. It's no. there to do cool epiphany stuff, and it does nothing else. Like, Can you play it like is, in like Arp, cool Arp? epiphany stuff? You play this with like Arlas Alvator, and but it's just a three-two. You 
you it's a three two that you fast advance and then you get two advancement contests on the next thing and uh, what... oh it's two of them with arella okay yeah you can combo this with arella yeah you you probably can get a bastard combo deck with this legit yeah, but I think you can only do that Buster Combo Jack out of Epiphany. So as That's, long as you're you, doing it in Epiphany, I can see it. Can you do this with like Restore or something? And I'll tell you what, this does combo like in Epiphany. You play this and you play the Hollow Man and all of a sudden you've got like an absolute brew going on. Um, yeah, yeah. This, wait, this doesn't actually work with Arella, right? Because Arella has to be from each. Uh, no, you score yeah. this like from somewhere. And then you score yeah, a second it's... card out of HQ. You cannot combo well, yeah, multiple it's, of these. It's a, so it's a 4-2 that advances something, which is like net equivalent to a 3-2. It's a 3-2 that advance, advances something, right? No, no. Or Okay, so if, if you are specifically in Epiphany and playing an Arella combo and you install this... Yeah, one, like Sun, Sun plus this and Arella and uh, everything. Like there, there will be a uh, bastard uh, combo with this. Come. I'm, I'm going to put an indeed here and move on, I think. All right. And all Radish thinks but, that you could score seven points in a turn with this, which I can't quite work out in my head. I'd ha I'd have to get them to. I mean, you can you can score seven points points. with Fly on the Wall, but no one does that because it's bad. And I don't think this is better than Fly on the Wall. It's way better than Fly on the Wall. Like, there will be a bastard combo deck, and you will be sorry after it gets found out by somebody. That that's fine. I'll move it up my tier list when that gets. <laughs> Uh, then the, there is the real DTR card. Uh, Augustus, you, you get this one. Uh, what, what was the name? Like Janina? Uh, Wait. Oh, right, this I, card. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's the exact reaction I was looking for. <laughs> I'd forgotten this was a card. Um, if I, uh, we, I can pronounce it, and then we'll... Uh, we'll put it in D tier. Yeah, point. I think so. Uh, so it's uh, Hanaina Dumont Kindelang. Probably. Yeah, so D tier. Is Dumont? Dumont is just a French name, right? Or is that also a French name? Yeah. I'm... That so, sounds French rather yeah. than Portuguese. But... So is there any reason not to play Daily Quest over this? Yes, because you're Mirror Morph. That's it. All Done. right. Yep. Let's go. Wait. So we can we can we can spend our extra click we get on your work on it being not worse, but not better either. Yeah, this guy is amazing in Mirror Morph. Like you 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 do the thing, you put it back, you put it back on a tranquility grid, you get the money back. Like and you were spending like, three like, influence for all of this. Yeah, yeah. Mirror Morph players don't care about winning the game; they care about doing cool <laughs> shit with ID. But Okay. That, that makes it even more on the win AMTs. Yeah, no. Yeah, I guess we can we can get the second DTR card, right? So capacitor, four strength, uh, four cost, not four strength notably. Strength three. Well, this is runner is tagged. This ice gets plus two strength. Gain one credit for each tag the runner has and enter on. Yeah, I have also it. forgotten that this card. <laughs> <in this>, uh, <laughs> this is notably for the Jai's the bingo thing <laughs> that NBN doesn't get any good eyes. This, yeah, like, this is this is the worst. This is like this is like they took like what I was saying about Boto, how it's like quite good, and then it gets better at the time in, of the game when you want it to get better, and it gets to a reasonable amount. This starts bad, and then when it gets to a point in the game where you want it to maybe be better, it's still bad. Yeah, like. This is awful. <laughs> it's so much worse than like even envelope, which is a horrible card. Rip ambient. Yeah, like only thing I see this can see this even being and like meme include is like Acme. And it's Acme card, so it's A yeah, tier. I, I, I don't even know if, if you if it does. Like you just you I mean I was just going through this and, with a slap handle the other day and yeah, I was like this Like is, the face check even doesn't do anything. Does nothing. <laughs> Does nothing. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> Let's not spend too much yeah, breath on it. Move on. <laughs> okay. Such a joke okay. card. Then actually, in good one. So, Piran House, Piran, something like that. Uh, yeah, I think that's just the English word for yeah. right? 
Yeah, I'm just not sure how to pronounce the English word at all. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I think in Portuguese it would be piranhas, but I don't think. Yeah, it's piranhas. Piranhas. Let's go. Yeah. So five credits. Code get illicit. Huge fan. Strength six. As additional cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the new illicit tag, so you can remove a tag as well. You may draw one card, do one net damage, and the run if there are more cards in HQ than the grip. This, I think Jai was actually pretty hype on this. Yeah, uh, I trust Jai when it comes to NBN. So yeah, if, like, if Jai's in chat and tells me what word to put, what I think put it's it in, like <laughs> five AM in Singapore. So yeah, probably. Um, yeah, like the Valentau text text often gets like turned off by the bad publicity mechanic in general, and your opponent just yeah. cannot have enough cards in hand some often to deal with this multiple times. Yeah, like it's only if, like if you click Nuka, you can get through it, but otherwise you will have to pay through it. Yeah, and I think I, the only thing that makes it awkward is that it's kind of hard to give your opponent bad publicity in NBN, um, and they just ignore the server that you rest this in most of the time. Yeah, uh-huh. you rest this in like uh, R and D or HQ, and they kind of have to deal with it at some point. And you can like play stuff like increase drop rates. Yeah, that's maybe where you lost me. <laughs> like, I've I've seen this talked about a lot with a lot of bad cards around it. Um, like you play one increased drop rates or something with this, and it's kind it's kind of turns out pretty nice. Like I see how this is good, but is it good enough to make up for the fact that you're playing increased drop rates? Oh, right. Okay, you don't play increased drop rates. You just play like a couple of these, and your opponent has to break this. In yeah, your that like, I can see. yeah, yeah, you play this in like your black like, sparrow brawler deck with king making. Yeah. yeah, like I think or there is going to be a deck there. <laughs> had to include, <laughs> had to include it somewhere. Oh, but like yeah, legit, we, I think this is like, going. Are you thinking as high as A, or are we putting this in B? No, I don't a think it's A too? there. I'm, yeah, yeah. B, still, B seems right. Yeah, yeah, it will probably be a deck, but it's probably not going to be an A tier, like A or S tier deck. It's like tier two fun deck for me because I really love the archetype that this is pushing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think BTR is fine. So next one, Seraph, another big big boy. Ten credits. Saying this has like fifteen <laughs> subtypes: Sentry, AP, Observer, and Deepnet. I think. Oh, wait. Is deep is deep a new subtype or has the No, I think like World Three was deep in it. Yeah, well World Three is deep. Yeah. That's like I'm I don't know what does it mean anything? Maybe just a lower thing, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's some like maybe some like god or something. Yeah. This card feels really good, but it's competing with so much, unfortunately. Yeah, like Sorry, do you ever play I this wait? instead of a Hydra? I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. No, you don't play it instead of Hydra. Yeah, like, right. and it's unique, so you can play three Hydra and one of these. Yeah, I guess. and that's probably good. Yeah, forty credits lying around. Are you, if you play like Asmar Glacier yeah, with smart. Hollow Man and stuff, and yeah. it actually turns out to be pretty. Like, it is better than the Tolbooth. Because it's kind of just the same thing. Although your opponent can just eat two net damage every time. Yeah. Yeah, you see, my my issue is that I don't think it is better than Tollbooth. Because Tollbooth mm-hmm. is the one thing right now which deals with decks that say, oh, I don't really need money. Like the kind of loo style decks, which are like incredibly low to the ground. And they're like, I don't need money because I'm going to break your ice with stuff that doesn't cost money. But Tollbooth says that you do always actually need some money to get through. This one doesn't. It says they lose free unless they suffer two net damage or take one tag. And those are, those are other options. Two net damage is, is probably an absolutely fine uh, Yeah, I think thing. you often just eat two I, net damage. And I, like, I, I don't I'm know, as you, far as I'm aware, you, can lo- you could choose to lose the free credits even if you don't have the free credits. Is that the case? Uh, I, I don't think, think so. so. I think you have to take the do net. Wait, no, okay, wait. 
it says on the last. I don't know. That's we should have maybe clarified this before reading it. But. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some judge nerd in chat, but yeah, I might I'm calling cause... it. You can't pay like three like, if even, you don't have it. Even if you can't, this is kind of like like it doesn't stop the runner from winning the game. Uh, if they, if you have if they have there's an agenda behind it, so I don't think you ever play this over a toll booth. Like if you yeah, if I your think... deck is somehow rich enough to play three toll booth, three hydra, and one of these, uh, which like some decks will be. So I don't think this will be unplayable, but mm-hmm. it definitely won't be. I think it common. goes in the Asmari, like Asmari super. Even if you play like more gla- glacier Asmari, yeah, and but as a one off, right? Yeah, so. you don't want to have two of these. Mm, like. One big problem I have it is it is the strength five thing. Your opponent installs turbine plus echelon and they just walk through this. Well, well it does take six. It's still six. Or it two net damage or take one tag. Yeah, like yeah. which is which is pretty significant. I, I think actually, without like a hush or something like that. I think this is taxing enough. Like, someone resed one of these on HQ against me earlier, and I just decided that I probably wasn't ever going to run HQ again because it was mm-hmm. just easier. Um, yeah, but so even if you have to run HQ, it's like... less work to get through than Hydra. Uh, and it no, dies to Hush. Not for, not for Shaper, because Shaper can get mm. like six strength echelon like fairly easily. So like yeah. you, no, you I guess. get through Hydra for three credits. I'm I'm thinking people will walk through this a lot. Like the lose three credits is kind of nice because it means they can't ever break the actual subs, but the actual subs don't do anything, right? Yeah, lo- just like, lose yeah. three. Two net damage. Two net, dam- is net, just... net damage does nothing. Tag is pretty annoying, but it's just like minus one click, minus two credits. Yeah, I'm kind of talking myself out of this, even mm. seeing play in Glacier as Mari. Um, so I think it's like legit C tier. Yeah, I think like there's maybe it does something that so that it's not D tier, but it's not higher than C tier. Yeah, yeah let's, like your Sengrin's your Sengrin saying what I think as well, which is lose free. I think let's run a choose that always. So even even if you have because it's not you have to pay, it's mm. lose, and you're just like okay, I'll lose free credits, and if you have no credits to lose. Then you're like, I'll lose free credits, and then it does nothing. Whereas Tollbooth would stop you. So I think this is worse than Tollbooth, and yeah, it's like C or D tier. Okay. And then we have another combo card, Sudden Commandment, with one credit. Operation Mandate. I think this like the first time we see Mandate ever, right? Mm-hmm. So when draw two cards, really good. <laughs> you may play one non-terminal operation from HQ. Threat three. If this is first mandate you play, you may gain play pay three to gain a click. Like this is a something that may I think there is going to be some combo thing going on. Yeah, the only problem is that this is a combo thing that got printed in the same set as burner, so I think it. Yeah, like, it's also trashable and everything. So like assembling the combo is so burst. much harder. Wow, I didn't see that this was trashable. Oh, that's mm. that's gone down in my estimation. Um, like, it's a cool effect. Like, you can play without threat three text also for value, but I don't think any NBN decks place enough operations for that to be the case. Yeah, I think like biggest thing is you get so. one card and play your hedge fund or something. That's not really. Yeah, a... but you, you can't even do that on turn one because this costs one. Yeah, you can't. So it's just like this card's decent, but there's a lot, so many things around it that make it worse yeah i think somebody will figure out that this like good combo that this goes on to and it probably will be a, some in like ci deck that needs more clicks and operations i mean, I, I have figured out combos where this uh, like kills the runner pretty easily the problem is that those combos are bad because of the meta <laughs> yeah so. yeah i think probably a c card it's one of those that doesn't really, really see play before somebody gets like right. a combo, but even the combo is really disruptible because your part think, combo parts are like agendas and trashables. Yeah, I think if Sports Metal makes a comeback, this suddenly sees play. Uh, because I think there's things that Sports Metal mm. can do 
with this or that kind of you know it doesn't necessarily have to be sports but that kind of purple yeah, HB that... sort of fast advancey type there was like the type. R plus yeah. combo deck at some point I think this probably would have seen play there yeah fast break R plus it might have I mean that's it that struggled for slots as it was because it was playing like about 15 agendas and fake agendas oh, and yeah, and that's... That, but it, it probably still would because if you if you were already at three points, then you can use this fast break, play your fast break, do some nonsense. I yeah. think this is probably a card which could become busted in Eternal as long as the corpse interested in scoring out. Um, as much as yeah, red cards three, three. in Eternal turn not yeah. matter. Oh yeah, threat is probably so bad in, in Eternal. In Eternal, it's pretty good. It's just like you use this to draw two to guarantee that you have your other combo that doesn't require four clicks. <laughs> and you just do that. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Now, now to the good stuff. The next yeah, like... mm. So, the yeah, hollow Jeff man. Said he's, he's already working on a combo with uh, yeah. Southern, Southern Command. Doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> no. So, the hollow man. Two credits. Upgrade. Academic Executive Psyop. Trash 2. When your turn begins, this is going to game lose somebody. I, for sure. Probably me. Uh, <laughs> click. 4 credits. Place 2 advancement counters on a card in a proof of the protecting this server. Or root or protecting. If you have not installed any cards from HQ this turn, instead place 3 advanced count count counters on that card. Use this ability only once per turn. Do we, do we need to talk about this yeah, card which, any before we put it in which ST busted or thing we will, can we talk about it's busted in like as like everything yeah everything it's yeah, busted the, in everything this is like, the best card in the set like the only faction that doesn't play this is HB because HB has seamless but mm -hmm. like you can play this in basically every single other faction and do something busted you probably it. even can it's play this crazy. in like PD and stuff yeah are you, are you suggesting that Mirrormorph players aren't going to be playing this because. Oh yeah, good point. This is like yeah. oh yeah, probably busted in Mirrormorph. Um, this is insane, and like we'll, you know, I even want to point out some like very very niche uses. Like this is the card which Isawak has been waiting for. Mm -hmm. This is like the card which, like the kind of shell game. PE style decks which just want to spam out a whole load of cards and then they suddenly kill you off the deck off off the board so they can actually like yeah. score out and do something else in one turn. It's the card that they've been looking for. So it like fits into loads of Jinteki decks. I don't um, know how you fit the influence, but this plus see how they run is really dirty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. messed this up. This is how you can score it. Um the I thought this was busted, didn't realise it could move, then I realised it could move, it's even better then. Yeah, it even moves uh, at the start of your turn, so you can install it on HQ yeah. and just camp. Like You can put it wherever it's safest and then you just yeah. you just switch it across when when you want to. It's like um it also it's fast advances, it never advances, it does like everything. <laughs> Never does this five threes too. Which yeah, like is crazy. <laughs> what the? F like that. This is genuinely an argument to make an entire new tier above S for this. Yeah, I think that, I think that's so almost legit. Um, but we can put it in S tier, and everyone knows that it's by far the best yeah. card in the set. Yeah, I think if you're if you're not building decks using this card, or you're not like basically just get ready to get blown out by this card. <laughs> <laughs> like when you when you lose and you lose to the hollow man you will lose to the hollow man if you uh, uh, don't yeah. trash the whole i i played against warlock earlier and i didn't <laughs> trash it because i needed money for the amani trace which i knew i was about to get hit by oh yeah it's also um, busted in asset like, decks like you no, install so bonus on table you install it on table and just move it randomly and like haha get blown out by me scoring this bellona from nowhere yeah no, it was it's insane it's like really really insane um it makes epiphany 
really incredibly pe- playable. Like we've talked a little bit about okay. putting bad cards. Maybe, 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 maybe we're going a bit too far. <laughs> no, we, no, 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 no. We're really not. This card is so good, and if you can like reliably get that that additional bonus text of not having installed something from HQ. Is it from HQ? I, I mean, I believe no, that you can put oh. this in an Epiphany deck and have it be busted. This hey. card is busted. Augustus, yeah. you, you can you should I, just not play it in Epiphany. You can, it actually might make epi, epi, Epiphany. <laughs> That's a hard name to pronounce. But, epiphany. And yeah, like, you I, can, you can fast that as a Bellona from he, like nowhere. No, no, no. no. You, you can, you can fast no, advance no, no. Uh, force no? too. Yeah, you can fast advance a Bologna on a Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like quite, yeah, it needs, oh, yeah. It needs some additional it's still installed. Uh, like that's good and all, but you can you can just you can fast that as a king a making for or not, sir. No. You can as a four two with a uh, out of our plus, and that's probably good. yeah. Like this card does so much. Yeah, we can put it in S plus and <laughs> yeah. Uh, so jump next. Well, cards Nuvem as a. 50 deck size, that's neat, probably encourages hella toxic stuff. Whenever you finish resolving an operation or action on an expendable card, to look at the top card, you may trash that, and then you gain two if you trash from R&D. Has anybody still figured out what this card is going to do? No, not yet. And yeah. it's, I mean, in terms of like, judging its power level like is it better than ob probably almost def- well, definitely not is no. it better than the outfit probably not is it i think it does built- way different oh. than it does something like, different than outfit i think this is going to be yeah. your, your glacier deck does it better btl I'm... i think it's better than btl when, when i first looked BTL, at this i it... think it's i cl- i think it's very clear like how I immediately see it, and like maybe there's something more that it does, but it just feels like you're getting some value. BTL is way more consistent because you can play a 44 card deck. Yeah. No, but for but me, like... the thing that this does best is assemble combos, right? Like you can just dig through your deck until you find your biotics and some commandments. But I thought that before they printed Burner, and then they printed Burner, and it made me like <laughs> yeah, like combo completely. decks never exist again. <laughs> So I, I haven't I haven't seen a compelling reason to be Nuvem other than assembling comp. Um, yeah, like there that... might be one out there, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, it kind of doesn't feel like it has a place ev- anywhere currently. So I think I it's C tier, it right? C. It's like C, maybe B, but it's like somewhere on the line between those two. Yeah, I think I'm currently going to put it in C tier, even if there's some odds that it goes up uh, at some point. Like the next card is the one thing that it does, right? But I'm yeah, but sure. I think you can do that from anywhere else. Also, like you yeah, can do that from Ob. Yeah, that's that's probably gonna. You can do it from Ob yeah, and actually tutor your spin doctor to not let up and steal it. God, Ob, Ob is so bastard. <laughs> so, uh, eminent domain three one agenda, and it has an expand expandable text. Reveal and try. Wait, really? Yeah. It does? I didn't read it. That's crazy. <laughs> Install and dress one card from HQ, paying a total of five less. And when you score this agenda, you may search your card for R&D for one card. Install and dress that card, ignoring all costs. Yeah, so you're never uh, expanding it, right? No. Like, yeah. Uh, it, it does actually expand it to res your tributary, which is an use case. I oh, suppose. that's neat. But, I mean, I've played a bunch with this card, and yeah, that's something I could have done, but it was almost always better to just score it uh, and get a better eyes. Like, Tributary is good, but it's not that much to do. Yeah, like, ig- ignoring all cost is such a... And search r and yeah. for any card, like... Oh, yeah. yeah We're resin is- archers, baby. <laughs> this is an incredibly powerful on-score effect. And, you'd, like, yeah. you'd hope it would be on a free one. Um, the fact that it's also got additional kind of value from its expend which you probably don't use that often but but does have like niche uses um but it is a free one so this is like replacing like it's 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 taking slots 
or it's it's replacing cards which you know you'd normally have like maybe a hostile in that in that space. I, I, or I don't think you can actually do this instead of hostile. I think you just have to add more of one card pointer to your deck. Yeah, replace like a two yeah. that with this. Pretty hard sell. Yeah. What's that? Like this is problem. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely not like for how high the upside is. This also has a lot of downsides. So. Yeah, like three one needs to be a game winning thing when you raise it. Does score it to actually be worth it? So, I don't. I, I think this lands it probably in A at the moment for me, but I could see it being lower just because. Yeah. Need to do it a lot of stuff. M- might not like get a find a spot to live in, and it competes yeah, like that's... with the goat basically. Next one. You didn't just put that in S tier, did you? Did you really put that in S tier? Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I got mixed up with the ban me please tier category going being the second one or first one. Memes costing us accuracy, unfortunate. Yeah, uh, have okay. to live with it. It's very solid. So the basalt spire, five three. No. I I sleep five threes. When runner steals this agenda, you may add one card from our ar- from archives to HQ. When you score this agenda, place two ag- agenda counters on it, and then it's basically like discount will throw this. Yeah, this notably um, gets us our hollow man back if they ever trash it. So that means that it's all pretty good just because it can do that. <laughs> yeah, but you're competing with five threes, and you have a pretty sicko one in Wayland already. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, this might be like um, your second if you're playing just five threes. But I like send a message is good if you're playing like archers also. Yeah, I think this is miles better than send a message. Yeah, I'm playing this over send a message, and I'm depending on the deck. I'm playing it over SDS because no right. SDS. Yeah, SDS is great if. If the program trashing has like some semblance on your gameplay, which like yeah, fair play, a lot of the time it does. But if you're playing like a faster a faster deck, this allows you like if you can score one of these out, you do want to score one of these out early. You don't really want to score an SDS out early, and that's a huge difference in how I see these cards. Like I wouldn't want to score a, an SDS out as my first agenda score like ever that's gonna Mm -hmm. feel awful you've got one of these scored like turn two or three you're gonna feel like you are on top of the world yeah i think it's like uh, i think all of that lands it maybe also in a tier um i would i let you think it's like b or c in my opinion oh no it's it's good it's yeah. and it's got an on steel ability which is really powerful as but well. But it's like, like a five three that doesn't defend itself at all, and so you have to like score score it. And... But it but you can score it by never advancing. It. Okay, yeah. Like if Hollow Man if is there a wasn't, bastard card, yeah. If there wasn't Hollow Man, this probably goes down a tier because it like does seem hard to fit. Um, but this is one of the best things to be doing with Hollow Man, just like on all angles, yeah. Hollow Man helps you score it. This gets you back Hollow Man, so mm. you can spam it more. Um, but in what deck are you actually playing this? I think like yeah, Rush, Rush Ob doesn't play this. There's that's maybe like Glacier Ob somewhere, but like Outfit yeah, don't play it. And, so it's like a new and punitive deck. You, you could play um, like some Glacier BTL with SDS and this. Oh yeah, Glacier Hollow BTL Man's. probably is with with Something this. Something like that. Yeah, Glacier BTL probably will be a pretty nasty deck. Yeah. So... And, like, I'm not sure if that's better than Azumari doing that same plan, because Azumari doesn't have to pay influence for their Hollow Mans. But... No, yeah. Like, I think so... it's all... All of that is solid enough that it gets an eight tier. Yeah, it, it's, like, good enough, and Wayland doesn't really compete with five threes. SDS is, I think, better, but, yeah... It's, this is way better than City Works, yeah, which you already saw some. Oh, yeah, yeah, you replace City Works in everything. I think Outfit probably doesn't replace City Works because you still do the punitive work. Uh, and yeah. you can push behind I, data loops and stuff. We weren't playing SDS as an outfit in addition to City No, I think 
this is like in the middle of those two. Both of those are like, better, in, better in like extremes, but this is like more solid. It could be a Hollow Man outfit build that doesn't do punitive stuff, and that would play Battle Spire, but I don't know. I haven't oh yeah, that's about that might that be. Anyway, so, hearts and minds. Things, one cost quick. political asset, trash to whenever your turn, be, turn begins. Move one advancement counter from installed card to an installed card can you do that you can advance. Finally, this some cards reach this. If this server is not protected by ice, you may also place one advancement counter on a ca installed card you can advance. This is based on like cohort program, but it has even less uses. I might look this yeah. scene. I, I, don't, I don't see this one. I don't see this one. It's again, it's just so cheap. It's so cheap to trash. Yeah, like Jeff, how, Jeff talking how about fossil it? spire or hearts yeah, and I think Jeff. I think no, hearts Jeff and fire for seamless rush. Which oh yeah, you recur seamlesses with the basal spire ability. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Like I was so high on this card when the first cards were revealed, and I was looking at like this and grudge work. But yeah, it kind of just doesn't seem to add up somehow. Yeah, like there's exactly one card that Grudgeware wants to advance, right? Yeah, like the advancement card does uh, not actually do technically anything. Two. No, it's technically two. Technically two? Yeah, because yeah, you sometimes just put a like uh, clearing house out. Well, you that's know? the one card. I thought, I yeah, I thought that was the one card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin. Yeah. yeah. It the the ability is busted probably somewhere, but nobody has figured it out. I th I think. Uh, I'm an advocate I for the is... D tier until someone figures it out. Yeah. I'm... Yeah. I think this is a really good Gagarin card, and <laughs> bearing in mind Gagarin doesn't exist then or anymore, then it's not great. I would be, be very impressed. Gagarin, no? If, if Garen wins an AMD, huh, whoever does that deserves some <laughs> uh, Yeah, I think it's kind of far off. But like, it was kind of funny when this was revealed. Everybody was so hype on it. Yeah. I think it was. was they? Being, I, don't think so. I, I think it was like one of the first few cards. So it it, you know, everyone was hyped because it was it was new cards. If it wasn't free influence, I could see it in PE decks, like like trappy PE decks. Yeah, but, but three influence again, while you can import Holoman for three influence. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Izzy, we're currently saying that Holoman is the best card of the set, uh, and Tributary is the second best, and it's not particularly cool. Yeah, like um, this legit will get banned, <laughs> probably. And this hopefully will get banned. And I guess corporate hospitality is pretty good, but I don't think it will get banned. No, it's just like a extremely strong, like fundamental card. Yeah, Izzy knows what's up. Yeah. Um, so then, I st I'm still tilted that this is not called Helix ninety one or something. But discount, two cost, uh, code gate, expendable, reveal. Draw one, reveal up to two agendas in HQ or archives, shuffle them into R&D. And when your turn begins, you may add, add this to HQ and the run subroutine. Are you taking all, out all of your spin doctors already? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I was doing that already before they spoiled this card, so... Uh, no, but on a serious note, this does do some work. Like, I've put it in decks and I have not been... Um, disappointed but it like do too much um the stream is baramu aksu and myself augusta caesar um yeah. bringing you the best takes <laughs> um, the such as descent text. mid yeah it, i think there's prob it's going to say playing like the btl list i think and will probably be pretty good there. You don't have need to import your attitude adjustment anymore. You can just play this. But like we don't play three in BTL or anything, right? 
No, you don't. Yeah, you don't play so, three. You al already have Spin Doctor. You can just play like, like play like two, I think. And like to Kanang for this out of Bob feels all right. Um, yeah, this but, probably also is a ob card. Mm -hmm. You can like ob misses two costars pretty badly. Yeah, I mean this you, is a would... this is a huge card for ob. Ob hasn't had a two cost slot which has been worth it unless you've been on former carry and you've never wanted to ob for former carry. Like mm -hmm. people were playing white space yeah. like, ironically just so that yeah. they could have a have a two coster. Um you know, I was playing uh wrap around so that I could have a, a two coster and I was mm -hmm. play, paying influence for it. This is like pretty huge. Just snagging them up. Yeah, it's like it's just a good effect, but nothing like game breaking or anything. So I think it's is yeah. it A or B tier? I think it's B. I think it's uh, yeah. Maybe I definitely a. wouldn't put it A. No. Yeah. Yeah, like I think I A tier know, is like a, your game, um, like cards that are built archetypes or built decks around. And desk and it's just a good a, card a. that you slot into deck. Yeah, A tier is cards that we're happy to play multiple copies of. B tier is like, yeah, we'll play one of these just because it solves a problem. Uh, yeah, or that the deck that it's built isn't just not too good. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. Then I think this the best art in the set. Really love this art. Hammer, six cost, sentry destroyer observer. Yeah, yeah. Strength four. During each encounter with this ice, the runner can't break more one than one of its subroutines with except using killers. Yeah. Give the runner a tag, trash one installed resource or piece of hardware, and trash one installed program. That is not anything. It's like mulch hate, right? Kind of. I mean, it's really good. It's a mm -hmm. really strong... Yeah, I think so. Like, very powerful um, effect. It's got kind of anti-boomerang, anti-botulus, anti-kit... Um, technology built into it uh, it's it's expensive but i mean it's a it's a killer and uh, it's a sentry and, and what are you expecting um i think this is like pretty good this is like very mean yeah and like and, there's like, there's not a one subroutine that or there's the, not a mandatory subroutine that you break and let's just fire two because like mulch loses the nobkri or the audrey with one of these subs mm. Oh, we're like we're putting in this into our deck that can tutor for it with Tukana, and then hoping we never get unless it's like in small trade. Right? Yeah, but also like your slower decks, like BTL probably plays this just as like mulch head thing. I think. Yeah, it like... Mulch can play killers though. Like it's not a, it doesn't automatically solve the matchup. I don't think. No, I, I mean I haven't yeah. been impressed, but I also haven't seen it play against. Mulch. It's a fine ice, even without like like you don't need this this text, right? If Crim's trying to break this, it's still costing them five credits. It's like, it's kind of bad most. without the extra text. Like, yeah, it, it costs them three credits if they're on echelon, though. Yeah, and if you find it this like early game, this is like the worst ice you can rest probably. Mm, it does maybe. nothing like during turns one, two, three, or something. Like uh, yeah, well yeah, but what what? Sentry does, you know, like very, very few of them. Ansel, I think. No, that does nothing. Turn one to turn two. It stops the runner from stealing the stuff. Also, Drafter is godlike. <laughs> yeah, it's... Drafter is the best, the best early <laughs> face check like, by like quite a long shot, yeah, and, like... that's, and it's only good as if you've played like a hedge fund or a. You know, like that's yeah, when it's com actually comparing different. this with the god is not really fair. Yeah, come on, we're so still going to be like paying free influence for our drafters. Yeah, I think it's solid B tier, right back to the center. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's solid. Mm, sounds fair. Then next, another six strength, three subroutine eyes. Log gem. Uh, you can advance this ice. It plus one strength. 
When you raise this ice, place one advancement counter on, on it, plus one advancement counter for each card type among face cards in some archives. And gain two enter on three times. I really haven't figured out a place for this card. Hmm. Quite expensive to res. Uh, I could see it get. It's like it is an ice which um which scales with mm -hmm. advancements counters, which is something that we haven't. There's not really a particularly relevant one at the moment. Mass Fingo is awful because Cleaver is around. No. no one really plays Colossus. And, you know, it takes a long time for Ice Wall to become yeah, relevant. Yeah, like, you already have... And in BTL, you already have Faros and Tree Line that this is competing yeah. against. I guess that's the issue, isn't it? Are you playing this over Faros? Because this is only one... It's only one credit cheaper than, than the Faros. Yeah, to I... be fair, its face check pays you back two credits. Yeah, but, but Faros face check it... takes two credits and a click for the opponent. Yeah. And like one place I can see this is if BTL struggles against criminal somehow. Because this like breaks boomerangs pretty well. Problem just is that yeah, the... it, it deals with boomerang, but it doesn't deal with turtle. <laughs> Yeah, totally. And yeah, like unless unless you've got already got like a ton of face ups in the in the bin and if you have then Yeah, this gets it why when you raise it, it's kind of, it doesn't even increase after you actually play the cards. And on the It's okay. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's like it's probably C tier because I think it's not a it's not a terrible piece of ice. I think, I think it's, you, it isn't. You never want to actually include it into your into your deck, right? Like when do you actually want to play put this in your deck? Okay, that's that you're immediately like, bringing up a good point. <laughs> like it, the the one thing it does maybe decently is dodge boomerangs, but I think BTL. Uh, yeah, BTL show, already pretty... eats like criminals. Yeah, and it does a pretty good job of eating boomerangs by just popping a bio vault whenever mm -hmm. they boomerang your ice. So I don't think this is a necessary thing. Yeah. And a low, okay. st low strength oh, card in oh. like the ice, ice destruction meta it feels pretty sus. Yeah. Also, doesn't do that much against watch this this in. Yeah. The one deck you might want this in is like your Odudua deck, and that's it. Oh, the wooden dot deck, even and even there you yeah. probably want to play mess even, mess even or something. then you're playing oh, three line. tree lines and and two ferroses and probably aquettes before this. And, so, and, no, then, yeah. and you right. just take, in... right. take a good one out of your deck and play a good one instead. Yeah, something that just doesn't instant lose to harsh. Go on, and yeah, we, 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 can, we, we can put it. Next one, business as unusual. Zero cost. Press on one of the following place. One advancement counter on up to two cards you can advance. Removes one remove all wires counters from one installed card. And you can do the other mode in three. Uh, Does this, this replace my virus for you? <laughs> this is exclusively an eternal card. Um, I don't see it doing anything anywhere else. I think like in a meta where your opponent only has like one thing that has virus counters and you want to install your eyes, I can see this. Or advance your eyes. Yeah, I as but like <laughs> I don't <laughs> unless yeah. it's like extremely weird sequence of events. Like like imagine a play like world where control lat is really good and that deck plays like uh conduit and fermenter. You can like steal the counters for one click without actually having to play Mavaras. But I think you just play Mavaras instead. <laughs> like I think this doesn't actually do anything against Conduit, because at that point in the game, if it's gotten to a problem to a situation where you can keep them out, 
from getting more mobile counters or more condo counters. Mm -hmm. You just purge by using three. Of your I games. mean, you can do like, you can install double eyes on R and D and then play stretch three or play like de delete tokens. Yeah, usually you only get to situations where that would be relevant if you've misplayed. Probably, I think yeah. you don't want to leave like R and D on iced against a conduit. Yeah, no. Uh, I think, like, Seat actually brings up an interesting point in just can you play this in PE where, like, my toes and then play this? Like you're playing a lot of one pointers that do very little, and then you're playing this that does very little, so I don't see it. Yeah, but, but that like, is you the get one the... situation where it isn't ridiculous. You get, like, two cards with three advancements counter, advancement counters on them, which actually represents, a, like, a real threat. You want to like go to my closest and then play this? Yeah, like that sounds like a scary line, I think. They just like face check into both of them and you feed them two agendas. Or they face check into the cerebral or ultra go, like basic PE stuff. Well, the problem is that if you're playing cerebral and stuff, this is taking up your cerebral time, right? Mm. Um, and you can already huh? just my closest and then advance one of them to three, which is that. Yeah, yeah, different. it's like. Uh, it's pretty small increase, <laughs> and it costs one influence can... in a deck that really struggles for influence. I think we can bin this into into D tier. Yeah, that's I, fair. It's, it's just it's eternal combo yeah. card. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, and like it might do something with sudden commandment too, but uh, burner kills. Oh yeah, that's true. Then Isaac Liberdade. Uh, I'll go. Yeah, Libertad. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> more, more D tier bait. Yeah, three cost. Each advanced piece of ice protecting the server gets two strength. Whenever on this upgrades move to a root of a different server, you may place one advancement counter on a piece of ice protecting that server. And when it turn ends, this can move. You actually think this is bad? Yeah, I mean, like, I have been. I'm, but I'm not, I don't want to preempt your arguments, but if you ignore all of the text except the first line, you can maybe do something with it. But like even then, you need to have a lot of advanced ice, and you need to make sure that this doesn't get trashed. Mm. Um, after I mean, the you, run. you play this in your like BTL deck, right? Would I not rather just have an extra? If I have like two eyes, this actually gets pretty annoying. And you have don't have infinite amount of faras or stuff. Yeah, but it cost you three. And like, yeah, mm -hmm. the two eyes is will be annoying for the runner. But then like they pay four twice for two cleavers. That's like eight. And okay. Like if you get all of that set up. Yeah, like just... I, don't, I don't think it's bad as the DTR cards. I think it actually has some play. Like if they just boomerang one. The issue, yeah, I think the issue is that, like, this only really works on advanceable ice, mm -hmm. which is already in this slightly weird spot where some of it's already incredibly good against the engines which this is meant to help against, right? Like, if this worked, I mean, it kind of works on any ice because this can put advancements on stuff, mm -hmm. but like, the kind of decks where you want two additional strength are things like uh like rh where all of your ice is is like four and five strength and that's great until they have a turbine down and then they start eating everything very very quickly but if this if you could increase all that ice strength by like by two then all of a sudden you've got an incredibly taxing deck um but like if you put this in btl like your already dealing with things like Pharos, which is incredible or gets eaten by a by a boomerang a tree mm. line which is incredible or gets eaten by a botulus like that i don't think that plus two strength helps i mean maybe it saves you a, an additional turn against the crew like that could be where it's like really good yeah i it, it's I yeah, think that the best ice that this is that this goes with is ice which doesn't benefit from having an advancement counter on it. 
And so I don't know whether that makes it much worse. Like, I, like I think that probably makes it considerably worse. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. like like Ravdivos played. Oh yeah, like you play this with like Mesnichestvo, but the Mesnichestvo actually well, loses the play. counter before that. Yeah, um, no, no, no. I think you play yeah. it with Tolbu. Like you just put a you just put a counter yeah. on this on. Yeah, yeah. Full booth using this or using the Mesnichesto. You you put a counter on a Hydra using Mesnichesto. All of a sudden, you've got an eight strength Hydra. You know, it's like that kind of deck, which that's the kind of ice suite mm. that you want this effect in. And none of those ice suites are Wayland. Yeah, I guess. Like... Yeah. It is to influence. Like, I can see the Pradovos deck working somewhat well. Because you're pretty good at dissuading the runner from running central, so you can maybe move it around to advance yeah. your toll booths. But... And you can yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. install it on a central server and then move it at the end of your turn to a remote server to get one extra counter on the mm-hmm. turn you install it. And yeah, but then you're telegraphing very hard, and they pinhole it. Like in Pratt, I guess you don't mind if they pinhole. Yeah, it. Yeah, if your opponent you... pinholes this, they're not pinholing your hollow man. <laughs> not too, yeah. Yeah, but. I don't think yeah, it's C tier. I think it's way better than the other C tier cards. Like these don't see I don't see any reason to play these cards. But like this actually have some has some play at least. Yeah. Like I've I've come close to winning AMTs with Prav. Um, <laughs> so I guess I could try to do it with this too. Um, yeah, Prav so C, like C for one very dedicated person will win an AMT with yeah. it and nothing else. Seems fair. And last card of the set, the powers that be, it's like team sponsorship. But the, the powers that be are canonically dead, right? So this card doesn't do anything? I think so. Is like, that how it works? Lore check? <laughs> well, they're, they're, I mean, maybe the law there is that they're bringing stuff back from the dead with them, because that's, the, that's, where they're, that's well, what that's they're doing. True. That's high. Um, as much as as much as this is just a slightly worse team sponsorship, this is incredibly powerful. Yeah, team sponsorship is almost like it, that is a really good card. Yeah, yeah, no shit. Um, <laughs> especially, especially currently because there's there's some other kind of powerful recursion, particularly like there's a there's a currently an absolute buck ton of stuff which happens when you score cards like mm-hmm. um uh, hb decks have a load of things which happen um way bounces is, your eyes yeah oh, like yeah Wayland deck have a load of stuff which happens and the snowball effects of this card when you include all of those other things is like nuts you don't have to be doing any what? crazy seven point combos with it just the fact that you're like, I'm gonna do stuff. I'm I'm now getting all of my like, um, all of my tempo back. Like scoring out uh, an off-world office and installing a Rashida into the remote, which you just scored the off-world office on in onto a tranquil. <laughs> yeah, like in Asa. <laughs> getting your like, it's just <laughs> insane. It's so much like tempo and then they have to go and deal with the powers of B or they have to just out tempo you I'm getting some really horrible PTSD because I brought a deck that did the play of score off world and stall Rashid out of Asa uh, to worlds and lost horribly <laughs> so it doesn't bode well for it you you didn't have this card in your deck though that's true it's true it would have been I would have gotten a lot of game losses if I did <laughs> um I'm also slightly biased. I have played Eternal team sponsorship decks, and as I've like iterated on them, I've mostly taken out team sponsorships. Yeah, um, the problem in Eternal is that if your opponents are able to actually deal with assets so well. You don't but isn't that true here too? Like, what, no. are we playing this? It's way less like... than your opponent doesn't isn't like wizard automatically. Yeah, but we also can't defend this very well except in like, Asa, right? Is this exclusively an Asa card? No, I think it, you can play this in like Asset decks as well. It does similar you, stuff to like Amanis and I. Play this in, yeah, you can easily play this in, in like Asset R+. But like, like, like what are we not... cutting out of R-plus for this part? Because it's an influence uh, and a slot? 
it's not hard because this is way more powerful than half the other deck cards in your deck because mm. this gets back the most powerful cards in your deck. So you're going like, like Totamarin for this, I think? Yeah, you have, you have to get economy, which, yeah, this is abstractly more powerful than economy, but it's not economy. Well, if this like gets you a couple of... Also, this triggers, it. like, this triggers three times in R+, if that. That's enough. I, I, I have played... Um with this card and i've played against this card and just a couple of triggers is enough triggers like uh even if like without doing anything particularly nonsense and combo heavy um it's it's enough to just get your like you just it means that we're already scoring agendas tempo positively at the moment because of all the tempo positive agendas now we're getting like additional tempo on the top of that and we're sapping the the runners tempo by saying okay now you have to like deal with what's in the robo and potentially also deal with the powers that be otherwise more tempo is going to come if this is another agenda which i can score like the usual problem is that that works great like if the runner is letting you do all of that, but you usually want to spend more time making sure that you score your tempo positive agendas than getting payoff only when you do that, right? I don't like I'll trust your judge and your read of this because you've played with it, but are you how high are you? Like uh, I I think like I would take a, a bet that this card is in I'm gonna say fifty percent of the of the top decks at the neck the like i don't know what's the first what's the first really big tournament that's coming up continentals first, probably like, continentals. wait yeah. you're, you're telling me that 50 yeah, percent. i'm the taking that deal every time 50 be, 50 like asset, of the top 50 top asset cut. spam no 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 but 50 percent of the top cut will be on this card fuck does no. this go to anything that isn't asset spam yeah like bar let's do a deal how much you're putting on it <laughs> How, how much? How much monster do you want, Axie? <laughs> I, I can do, make uh, a deal for one. Uh, I do. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. I'll. All right. Uh, I, I'll. I'll do you. Uh, I, I'll. I'll buy you a, a can of white monster. Mm-hmm. I'll ship it to you. Um. <laughs> in return, you. Uh, when I win, win, you have to buy me a really fancy, nice coffee when we're in Italy. Deal. <laughs> Done. You're sending me a free monster. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, Axe are just getting all the good yeah. bets. Okay, except that one bad bet. We don't uh, so you're saying that this is going to be like S tier? What deck are you playing this that isn't is, asset spam? I, I think this is S tier. The hell no. Think... Come on, like it's it's team sponsor, but like a great card, but it's not S tier. It's not fighting with these two like motherfuckers. I was getting ready to maybe get talked up from B tier. Um, I think it's like B tier. B it's Typical beater. It's like a good card, but it's not like extremely amazing and broken. You don't like win games with this, I think. I think this wins games because I think the I think I think the like steamroller kind of like the way that this just turns a game which the corp is already winning into one which they are winning and they're winning it hard is like. Very how, d- like, if you have this in your deck, how do you ever face down a loo and not feel like you are zero percent to win? Right? <laughs> just, just, ju- just dodge the matchup. Easy as. Like, like it, it really depends. I'm, I'm not saying that you're just sticking this out completely undefended, but there's plenty of ways to, to, do that. And so it, kind, be- it takes up your yeah. wage workers remote. Like you already like, have three like, things that maybe, you're wanting to ice. Maybe it's better than wage workers. No, come on. That's a crazy. That's a take. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, not we have hollow man. On, so but, yeah. To be fair, wage I, workers is a lot less relevant. But yeah. still. I think okay. me and Bayer, that's, that's, me and I, Augustus are overruling it to, for B tier. Yeah, yeah. Let's put it in B tier. You're putting it in B tier. Uh, it's B tier. Oh, it's like. Basic B tier. So wrong. <laughs> I can it, maybe it just dawned on me that we are slightly pessimistic about core cards in this 
you're gonna uh, yeah. you're gonna one that's 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 the big one no it's going to be like these cards are carrying the me- like the top tiers are carrying the meta game and nothing else will see play like you're not going to play a deck without like hollow mana tributary and everything i just don't see the place for the powers that be all right well yeah. i'll look forward to my coffee <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that was every card. Right. That's, done, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that the sure meta solved. The Here's a list yep. that you can watch. Like, there will be a busted stock to Ember's King making deck. Everybody will see it and call back and, and tell me. And I'll the write. powers that be will definitely be fifty percent or whatever. Yeah, definitely. Uh, or you can you can listen to me who just has correct I think, takes, like Hollow Man good. I think Bob was taking a worse like bet than I was taking as Jai here. At least like uh, I had a chance that the tributary will get banned out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your bet is basically just will tributary get banned. Right? Yeah. And that's a pretty good bet actually. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like boss <laughs> wilding. <laughs> uh anybody else? I'm, I'm sticking my Okay. Yeah. Hmm. August, have you got any Izzy. shout outs? I love Izzy's take. I love Izzy's take yeah. here, but um but Sisyphus is definitely not D tier. It's maybe C minus. <laughs> there we are. Absolutely Izzy, do be aware Sisyphus being D tier might be a psyop by some of us. Uh but it probably is not is such yeah. a bad card. <laughs> um I don't have any shout outs except uh Ag good. That's no, yeah, yeah. I think Bob probably shouts out the YouTube channel. Do you have anything else? Probably. It's it's something like YouTube slash Baramwu, I think. I've yeah, never, I, I've I should quite probably done. put a link into it in the description. Yeah, do that because I'm really bad at yeah. remembering exactly what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, come and uh, come and join me on a Monday night. And there's other half of this same thing on Baramwu's channel. So go watch that. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll come back in like three months' time and see how absolutely wrong we were. That sounds fun. And yeah. Compare compare it to Jeff and Andres tier list. I'm going to, one of if there's there. going to be more tier list videos or something, I'm going to do the tier list tier list. Yes, please. <laughs> this needs to be a thing. QTM, it's your ball. Um you you're trying to do a tier list so we can yeah, we can compare them. Yeah. But yeah, I'm going to sleep and see you everybody. Later, guys.